Welcome to the Dirt Life Show with your host, George Hamill. Welcome to episode 141 of the Dirt Life Show. We got a great show for you guys lined up tonight. Man, it's hot in Southern California, but I'll tell you what, our guest is uh, one of my big big buddies, got me into off-road racing. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, few have actually accomplished as much as uh, him tonight. Not only uh, has he been in the industry for a long time, he's been an industry leader. Uh, he's a multi-time off-road champion, Dakar champion, brought home a win to the uh, United States of America. Uh, man, that was such a cool moment. Supermoto racer. Back in the day, he participated in the X Games. He's a business owner. He's a family man and lover of all things Jeep. So welcome, Casey Curry. Uh, thank you very much. Dude, you've done a lot in your life, man, <laughs> so I can't wait to get into it tonight. But um, hey, on a fun note, we got a bunch of your homies that are going to join us. I, yeah, I got a little, I'm a little nervous when I saw the, uh, the, the lineup. Sheet with, yeah, the lineup was Makes me nervous. So, uh, Oren Anderson, yep. O-Ring, he's going to join us. He was actually, like, I, I think he's pretty much the biggest guest on the show because he was on last week, too, with, with, hanging He's out with Bryce. Celebrity. Yeah, big, big celebrity guy. Uh, Sean Berriman's going to join yep. us. He rides in the passenger seat with you. And I noticed another guy that rides in the passenger seat with you, Aaron Casada. He's yep. going to join us, too. And then uh, one of your longtime sponsors, KMC Wheels, Ryan Guidus, is going to join us. So that's going to be fun. Uh, all right, let's go through and we'll just uh, get the, all the sponsors and stuff out of the way. I'm Georgie Hamill, your host of the Dirt Life Show. Please share the show. Uh, it helps everybody. It helps grow the industry. It helps Casey. It helps us. Uh, and uh, it helps you guys, too, because you guys can all talk about come some fun stuff that gets behind the scenes. And, uh, man, just enjoying the off-road life that we live. Uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff today, uh, stuff that Casey does on a day-to-day -day basis, all the way down to, um, you know, what he's got going on coming up in the future. And how he got me into off-road, so that'll be cool. Uh, so thank you very much to all of our sponsors, uh, the guys over at KMC Wheels, who's going to, Ryan Guidus is going to join us, Maxis Tires, Motul, Shock Therapy, you can use the code DIRTLIFE at shocktherapyusa.com, uh, buy a steering rack, lemon straps, all that good stuff, uh, bump steer delete kits, JL Audio, um, those guys are doing some really cool stuff uh, with some of the UTVs, Evolution Power Sports, uh, you can tune your car from your phone with their code shooter, uh, go grab uh, an exhaust, and they're doing some cool stuff with the phoenix children's hospital i love to see companies in off-road give back don't you yes absolutely um so uh go check out the guys at evolution power sports follow them on social media the guys over at zolinger racing products you can use the code the dirt life uh go get yourself some tie rods radius rods match it up to your shock therapy steering rack uh vision canopies and cryo heat all right so um like i said share the show one of the main things that we're going to talk about tonight is uh, family off-road racing, that kind of stuff. Um, that stuff is really, really, really important to not only Casey, but I think to a lot of us uh, that are just in the off-road industry, man. We love seeing our families grow, and we love hanging out with them in the dirt, don't we? Absolutely. Uh, when was the, t the first time that you got to, like... I don't know, go in the dirt. You went with your dad or like, what was <laughs> oh, it? We've been, uh, yeah. So obviously my uh, family grew up in the off-road industry as well. So my grandpa was a uh, passionate off-road racer, driver, jeeper. And uh, he got my dad and my uncles into motocross racing at a young age. And all of my uncles. Uh, oh, so it was two loved, wheels, huh? Oh, yeah, two wheels. And we all started on two wheels. So even my kids, my kids only ride dirt bikes. We don't do trophy carts. No, do no really? Not, you know, nothing. It and makes it way easier to wash yeah. and work on. Well, we tried it for a little bit, but they they both want to ride dirt bikes, so we're uh, we're doing it. But yeah, we all grew up uh, two wheels, and then from there, everyone everybody likes to go fast and have you know the speed. So the adrenaline rush is uh, where it's all about. Yeah, totally. The dirt bikes. It seems like it's where a lot a lot of us start, right? Like since you started there, was that like what you wanted to do from a young age? I uh, no, I grew up like my dad. Uh, treated a little bit differently than I guess the people that want to get gnarly. My dad's biggest thing for me was to have diversity in all, you know, wakeboarding, surfing, snowboarding, skiing, water skiing, you know, going out to the desert, riding motocross. Uh, we did so many different aspects, yeah. uh, sand dunes, which it's funny because I didn't realize how much that played a factor into my career until I uh, got to the car. Once we got to the car, I realized that my dad's, uh, you know, training as far as like us having fun as kids doing all these different aspects of driving. Like and, versatility and, oh, you're talking? Yeah, absolutely. The You know, just the ability to go out and conquer all like the car, you need all that. So it it, it was fun. But yeah, my, uh, the entire family is very much so into uh, off-road racing and motocross and it all. 
Dude, it's kind of cool to see that, though. Like, I really appreciate that. There's a lot of good that, um, well, there's a lot of bad, too. Like, dirt bikes bring a lot of good, right? Because they teach you so many things, but they also teach you that you can get hurt, too, yeah. right? Like, that's the reason why I walk around all messed up. But the the cool part about it is, is there's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of... Um, you got to be humble because you, it can put you on the ground, right? <laughs> and it teaches you all of those things. And like you said, it kind of translates, like, I don't know, into all of the stuff that you actually learn in life. Like, we're going to talk about it a little later, but, like, business stuff for you, yeah. be, having goals, like wanting to be a champion, like you uh, achieve on four wheels, like all of these different things that you just, like you said, you didn't really understand what you were being taught by your dad in the, at the young age, but now you do. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, for me, the dirt bike thing, obviously, we all know that anyone can put a helmet on and go fast in a race truck and crash it and wad it up. But I think the skill set comes involved when how fast you can push it in certain situations, right? And that's where a dirt bike, yeah. right, when you can ride a supercross track or a motocross track as fast as you can without crashing, yep. right? Because there, there's that fine line of, and, you know, there are guys that can go super fast one lap but can't hold it together for a 30 minute moto. A lot of that ability and, and skill set really comes into play when you start getting into short course racing where you're 20 minute sprint all out. You got to drive as fast as you can without making mistakes, but having the strategy of that quick pass, quick aggression, like learning how to get a spiked heart rate. And then you got, you know, actually bah. that brings up a really good point, too, is because like when you were racing short course, now, you know, like the whole setup thing. Right. Because in motocross, a lot of times you can just dart to the inside in one corner. But in short course racing, you got to set it up three or four corners yeah. in, in advance. Right. Like so there's a lot of stuff that translates that you really kind of just learn and it becomes second nature. Right. Yeah. The ability to, uh, you know, the ability to basically well, first set up just any race car in general, right? Anyone can get in and drive, but to be able to tune and have the geometry work how you want it to work and the suspension work how you want it to work, there's a lot of stuff that goes into all the, you know, fine-tuning of shocks and spring rates and, you know, how the car feels in the corners and the steering. And I feel that between motocross and then getting in a short course, we we learned a lot about that. And, you know, we built our own short course trucks, so I got <laughs> we got thrown in deep with – learning setup and learning how to build. Dude, I, re I remember that back in the day. Cause I, I remember, well, two things we'll talk about like what it does first, the dirt bike stuff that you're talking about, it gives you that seat of your pants feel, right? Yeah. Like, so you know what you're doing with, or what you're feeling with your feet with your hands on the steering wheel and with your butt. Like there's so many connections that you have to a vehicle that a lot of people might not get unless they had the dirt bike experience. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that, you know, learning how to set up a vehicle long term it, to have a successful career over a long period of time is being able to be able to fine tune a car and make it work how you want it to work. And just like you said, like to feel it in your feet and to feel it under your butt and how it feels in, in you know, in your hands. You know, I, I think a lot of that came from motocross. Did it um, did it come like did you know that that was like the feeling? Did you know that you were doing a good job when you first got in? Uh, <laughs> your first four wheel car? I no, I still don't even know if I do a good job. It's just. I just have my way that I want things set up, right? So I have a very unique setup that I like. I like the way cars feel. You know, I have a certain way I like everything to feel from tire pressure to tires to, you know, shock setup to. Well, give us, an, give us a little bit of an example on why you do that. I'm going to show some of the people, uh, some of the stuff that you guys, uh, your guy Kyle Chandler, he actually sent us some pretty awesome pictures oh, of yeah. you back in the day. Oh, uh, <laughs> so like riding a little street bike around. Yeah, we had a oval track. We had a literally a, a a small racetrack in our front yard. So it got it. My dad obviously super into racing. We had a, literally had a circle track in our front yard. Yeah. So here's a good picture. Gotta have the three wheel one eighty five. Oh yeah, Dude, at the river. That was the one where the suspension was all in the tires. Yeah. The tire pressure was the suspension, right? Yeah. And then so, uh, what was that? You guys. So that's a nineteen uh, nineteen twenty Packard. So my grandpa built that race car from the ground up. Basically, found a car in a uh, in a field and rebuilt it to race it across country. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Oh, and this looks like maybe the first right. time you got a four wheel right. car. The old school Dude. players, right there. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's pretty sweet, man. Uh, yeah. But you were old, yeah, super young in some of these pictures. I don't yeah. know where this picture. So is we from. did a Rod Hill, uh, Rod Hall driving school. We were 15 years old, and Rod Hall allowed, allowed us to come out and. You got they, to take they, a Humvee, huh? Yeah, they well, they that's where they do their driving school. So like we went when we were young, we did like the go kart schools, we did sprint kart schools, we've done all the driving schools and techniques just to go out there and have the experience on how to drive. It's pretty cool that you got, you got PW to experience 50. like a lot of us, uh, you know, like 
we all consider you, especially myself. Uh, I idolize you and, and and want to be more like you when it comes to being a professional <laughs> racer and all of these things, right? Uh, you and I are friends, but that's a true statement, right? And a lot of people that look at you and fans and things like that. But the cool part about it is we do all have a connection with you. You started from very humble beginnings. Oh yeah, no, no, no. We did we. <laughs> We grew up, man, it was at like just like everyone else, totally normal. My dad, my dad worked a lot, so like it's funny the picture that you're looking at with the off road car, like it's in my grandpa's driveway. So my my dad had a, uh, well, I had an idea on a first car pre runner, and uh, dude, my dad would go work. You know, he was working a lot of career enterprises, so my grandpa and I would cut the car further apart than we were supposed to. But oh, really? Grandpa, grandpa would hook it up, so then my dad had to come in to do more work to you know Dallas in, but. I mean, we wrote, yeah, we rode dirt bikes a lot, so. It looks like you did, and yeah. uh, being from Southern California, uh, it used to be a little easier to ride oh, dirt yeah. bikes out here. I think that's Nuevo right there, uh, Lake Elsinore. Was but, it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think it was Lake Elsinore. When was the last Nuevo. time you saw some of these pictures? A long time ago. Dude, it's, right. did that, this looks like it might have been in the woods or something, uh, Mammoth, I don't know. No, I don't even know. No, I think it's in my house. Dude, we used to, we used to With live. Big, big trees like that? Yeah, well, my backyard where the shop was that you went to like 10 years ago, back when we were kids, that was just dirt. So yeah. we used to have, we used to have two acres. That we I remember that, Anaheim bikes. Hills somewhere, that right? That is literally in our backyard. Oh, like, there you go, the little man, shifter he, car or something? really did find some photos, man. Dude, I, Kyle, I know, hook, Kyle hooked me up, dude. I'm kidding. So he did, he really did a good job. We did like, all the go kart school, dude. We literally did all that stuff. Man. All right, just, so this this one's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna sh I want to show oh this yeah, to everybody. Shit, so man. this it's, is uh, it's my grandpa and my grandma and, uh, and me on the lap. Yeah, and you're like getting ready to start driving. How oh, yeah. old were you? Do you, uh, you know? Uh, it's a uh, probably seven or eight. Do you know where this was at? Uh, let me see the photo. Maybe again. Tahoe or somewhere. Like no, a, I don't know. It's probably the so we have a house in uh, Mojave Valley. Oh, it's okay. probably closer to the uh, Laughlin area or Havasu area. Big go kart guy right Big here. Big go kart guy. Uh, Camelot's man. gone now. Oh, it's gone. Bummer. Even, yeah. Dude, what would it be to uh, like rebuild one of those cars like that, man? I, that would be uh, so dude, cool. There's. Those are some good times. And then, sure. so here's a picture that I think everybody can get along with. It's just being a little kid and Glamis. being out in the dirt, right? Like, so Glamis right there. <laughs> we talk about this all the time on the show is like all of us grow up with the same kind of thing I'm just talking about right now, kind of all the same way, right? Like, I know that for me, every single time I go back to the dunes, in fact, I want to go for Halloween this year because um, I just got a pro R like yours behind <laughs> us. Um, but every time I set foot in the sand or every time I pull into Glamis, I always think of like when I was like 10 or oh. eight years old. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then now you have children. Yep. So you're teaching them the same kind <laughs> of stuff. Yep. So yeah, they're, uh, both my boys ride dirt bikes. Uh, we're trying to do their, you know, obviously being a professional race car driver, I get to, I, I'm very blessed to go and do a lot of cool things with a lot of fun people. But, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to go down and we, we play, we're playing baseball. I got one son playing baseball, another one playing football and uh, trying to go and do all the sports and trying to be totally normal during the week as far as, you know, our lifestyle can get carried away quickly with all the travel and everything I have going on. But what do the kids think? Do they like those things more than uh, what dad does or do they like what dad does? Uh, more? No, they would. My, oh, my oldest would race anything he could right now today, like seven days a week my kids both of them love it but my oldest one has talent for sure oh nice just we're holding them back right now because uh, dad's still got a racing career so they we do ride i have a full-blown motocross track in my house oh uh, cool so i built a full uh track uh brian deegan's uh nephew actually built it for us oh really oh so, yeah i did we got a yeah, Sunny. Yeah. So built us a full blown radical track. I got it's all watered. Uh, nice. So yeah, we we ride. We we have some fun. We we absolutely love it. What kind of bikes do you guys ride with the kids? Or do they you got, ride? he's got a. I don't even. Uh, dude, I've ridden a dirt bike in twelve years. Really? Now I got a one ten. No ambition now, for it. I uh, just. Yeah, all they got uh, to one ten. I did. Too. I like your story. A friend of mine died right in front of me. Crazy. You know, just one of those situations I never wanted to be a part of in my life and. From then, had kid, got married, had kids, and uh, just kind of the fire unlit for me on the motocross thing a little bit. But my uh, kids got, you know, 50 Supercross Mini and a 50 Supercross. So they uh, have they tried any of those electric bikes yet? No, my neighbor. So, dude, this is how small the world. My neighbor's Mitch Payton. Oh, really? So the owner of Pro yeah. Circuit. So uh, his boys both have uh, the 50 CC electric bikes. Those things are so, so cool, uh, dude. Dude, but they're like 12, 12 or thirteen years old, and they rip them on like on my really? motocross track. And dude, they can hit all the jumps. Really? They rip. Yeah, dude. they ride eighties at the regular track, but at the house, they shred on them. 
That's hilarious. That's actually super cool, though. I always wanted to see what one of those yeah. little electric bikes would be oh, like. Did they rip? Have you got the ride yeah. one yet, or no? No, no. Oh. I'm not, I'm <laughs> we'd big. probably I'm kill big. ourselves on it. Right? Yeah, they're uh, fast. Let's see here, Ty Spencer. Uh, what up? Yeah, man. Uh, let's see here. Oh, sick around the razor track too. I well, I've actually never. I haven't driven the razor on the track yet. I got it. We have. Is it big enough? Yeah, it's big enough. But I got like. We have some other areas we ride our razors. We got some sand. We got a little. We got we got a, we got a pretty sick track. Nice. So yeah. you, where do you guys usually go in Southern California to to uh, ride? Like if we're gonna go out for me, I just go to my river house. It's yeah. just easiest to go to Arizona. Yeah, because yeah, there's no rules. It's yeah. the wild west out there, man. Right. I do miss Arizona. For, <laughs> I do miss Arizona for some of that stuff. Uh, let's see here. MFR Musico family uh, adds awesome story, man. Uh, yeah, I can't read the whole thing because the text is kind of small, but uh, I know that they're talking. They're from Australia and. Uh, they came over here to the United States, and I was able to go bicycle riding with them in Oceanside. And uh, Toby and Ben, his dad, were talking about all of this stuff. And I told them, I go, don't put any of these people on, a, like, a pedestal. And I didn't mean that rude. I mean, like, all of us grew up the same way, like oh, what yeah. we're talking about, right? Like, And he's teaching his son the same things that you're teaching yeah. your son, the same thing that your dad taught you. Like, all of us have this weird camaraderie thing. Like, we, everybody's the same. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Agree. I, well, they offer community is so different. I think that, you know, we don't have that. You know, I've trained with a professional uh, trainer in motocross when I was, you know, focused on a short course career. And, dude, the the lifestyle they live is so focused around fitness and so focused around the, the ability on a motorcycle that yep. look, the sponsor is more associated with the team. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure being applied by your team. But as yep. far as, like, the marketability and, the you know, the sponsors, that all comes through performance. We're an off-road you know, you got to be a regular human being, right? Yeah. Like for me, my passion project is, you know, life is an adventure and, you know, obviously I want to win everywhere I go. And the challenge is we do everything, everything we do is to be the best everywhere we go. But obviously for me, I, we love driving Jeeps and I love going exploring and I love driving my Polaris Razors, whether we're in Mexico or in Utah or in Arizona, like to just go out and, you know, see how capable vehicles are and showing it and sh showing the experience so, so that everyone that, doesn't get to go out and do it often when they do do it i can hopefully show them a place that when they get their razor right they can go out and drive it in the yeah. same areas i couldn't agree with that more i'm actually going to go to utah to announce a race for the outlaw series west um this weekend and i'm going to stay an extra day on monday and go and ride oh, out in like st george and oh like you'll love it yeah and a lot of it is because i've seen a lot of the yeah. promotion and things that you've done in the jeeps or in the razors whatever it is but that's one of the things that i learned a lot from you actually so i'll tell this story real quick is I had no idea what off-road was. I just knew dirt bikes, right? And somehow, I think you and I got hooked up through uh, Todd over at, I think it was Next Agency, like 10 or 12 oh, years ago. Okay, there we go. And it was, dude, it was a long time ago. Yeah. And I was working uh, I, when I was building all the GoPro stuff. And and then we got hooked up and you were like, hey. Website. Yeah, and you were like, hey, can I you build a website for me? And I'm like, sure, yeah, no problem. And then I started seeing like you're, you or, or your brother, somebody started sending me pictures to upload to the website. I'm like, what the fuck are these <laughs> things? Like, these things are race trucks? And I called you and you're like, yeah, dude, they're rad. Like, you can huck these things. And then so you invited me to a race, and I think it was at Wild Horse Pass or something in 2012, maybe. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're talking like 2008. Maybe. Okay, so it was so a while it was, ago. Yeah, it was before my monster deal. And owners, I know that because... It was still a manual transmission. Yeah. Because that was a hard part. You had to go, we dr you drove it. Yeah. And then so I didn't know what they were. And I was like, what the heck are these things? And then it started growing on me. And you're like, bro, you got to drive it yeah. sometime. And I was like, I don't know if I can afford it. And you're like, yeah, it's kind of expensive. <laughs> and then, But you said, come out to California. I'm going to go do some testing and you can sit in it and drive it yeah. for five minutes or whatever. So you let me drive it, and I was stuffed in there. I oh, remember yeah. it. I was kind of scared. I was like, I don't know what this thing is. is it like a regular truck? Like, and <laughs> you're like, no, dude, just start banging away, just hammer it. And I drove it, and I was like, dude, this is the raddest thing on the planet. Like, what are you? You could drive a truck like a dirt bike. That is funny. It's funny because we were supposed to go to Glen Helen. It rained, and we ended up going to the. We found some like small track out in like Johnson Valley. Dude, I'm now thinking back. Dude, that is funny. That was it's, a long time. It's actually Orn and I randomly yeah dude it's crazy and then uh yeah john hupper just chimed in and said yeah everybody grew up like somewhere out in the in the wilderness whatever it's snow or dirt or whatever it's all the same concept right man and you meet people down the road like i was able to meet casey through a work relationship but it ended up turning into me 
being introduced to off-road racing. That's crazy. It's so, it is, it's really crazy. Right. And like, for me, it was liberating because I got hurt. And then now you've shown me that there's this other form of racing that I can potentially like be a part of. And so I had no idea, but then, you know, side by sides kind of started coming out and coming to fruition. And I was like, dude, this is sweet, man. This is such a good thing. But to get back to what I was talking about is along the way, I understood the camaraderie aspect of it because you literally were like, I don't know, come out, dude, come on, like get into it. Like this is something that you're going to enjoy. And you really showed and paved the way for a guy that was just a dirt bike guy. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, you're right, dude. I remember that. And I remember going out to the desert and ripping around. Yeah, Uh, I I still have a picture somewhere, but uh, it was pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, like as far as like cost of racing goes, that kind of set in. But side by sides have opened the door for a lot of people to start getting into it now. Oh, side by sides have changed. I mean, everything in racing, if if, it's crazy because if the UTV market is where if it was as big now as was when we first got started, the opportunity to, for success and just for the learning, the ability to learn how to drive, the speed that the new, you know, especially the new pro R's, the, the speeds that they have are absolutely insane. Dude, they really are. But they're rad, right? Like, it's cool to see because now it's a, and we talk about this all the time on the show, but I think it's really relevant is the entry point into it. Like, we just talked a little bit before the show, this uh, Polaris Pro R that's sitting yep. behind us here. You just raced it at the Nora, I yep. think you said? So, um, and the Nora is how many miles? Uh, about a thousand or eleven hundred, I think. Yeah, so it's it's a long race, yeah. right? You get it's like a stage though. You get to work yep. on the car if you yep. need to. Um, but I thought this was a brand new car, <laughs> and you just raced wow. this a thousand miles. Literally, same tires, no flats, same but, tires, same wheels. All but I it's, did, it's stock. Stock. I did a. Yeah. It doesn't even have a cage on it. That's what I mean. I did, like, did seatbelts, so I got it's got. And you got some mirrors and yeah. stuff, and you got a pumper. Actually, they're all from Polaris. Yeah. So you know. So all the accessories. Yes. So let's just say you spent a thousand bucks. You got a good sponsor for wheels and tires that yep. gave you the wheel. But let's just say you spent a thousand bucks on accessories and you went and raced it. Yeah. Like that entry point is insanely cool. And not only that, though, we are running. Uh, we are running top ten overall. So like at the Nora, we are literally in the top ten overall. So every morning we are starting with the trophy trucks and class one cars. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Oh. Uh, we got a social media question from Cali Boy AZ Tech. Um, like the uh, um, the Pro R just got uh, it just popped up on Instagram today. It's it's kind of stupid, honestly, but um, you don't have to wear a helmet in the dunes. In I the saw Pro that. R stuff. I just read that. Yeah, and like uh, I don't know. In in my eyes, man, the internet. In my eyes, the uh, People should just wear helmets no matter what car they're in. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, the, the speeds that they're going are dangerous. Yeah, and well, in any car, right? Like it, in a Jeep. Yeah. In, like yeah, whatever it is, like you should always be able to be safe and uh, protect, especially your family. If you don't want to wear a helmet, that's on you, bro. But like uh, we always suggest that you guys do that. Um, so we're going to move on from that question. But thanks, Cali Boy Z Tech, for uh, uh, talking to us about that. Um, so getting back to what I was talking about, the off-road stuff, like – I really appreciate you for being so open and allowing me the opportunity to see this world of racing that I love so much. Right. And you didn't have to do that. Like that was cool that you did that at the time. Um, and it really opened my eyes up to seeing all of this rad stuff. And it just goes back to show that the camaraderie portion is the base that all of us love so much. Right. Yeah. And it's probably what mostly drives you. And tell me if I'm wrong here, because you like doing events. You like going jeeping with all your friends, all your partners, all of these things. You schedule events that are aside from the work that you do, yeah. aside from your racing. And I feel like that's the baseline of it all. Yeah, I think, you know, like for me, it's just meeting people. That was something my grandpa's always into, like just going out and having fun and, and getting the opportunity to meet new people because you never know where an opportunity lies. You know, there's right. there's so many people that have, you know, their own lives that all of a sudden you start connecting dots and here they are buying a, 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 a brand new players just because they went out with us one time. We've, we've actually gone out to the desert and taken some people from Monster Energy uh, for an event and literally ended up having them buy Jeeps on their way home. So really, yeah, we had some uh, guys from New York that had never literally never experienced any of it. And from there they, uh, yeah, they bought Jeeps and, it's cool. So now we're actually seeing more and more people come and be a part of the family. So especially when it comes to people with another brands, uh, the troublemaker himself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. What's up, Orrin Anderson? How are you? Oh, it's good to see you guys. And Casey, it looks good. It's missing a boat. I'm 
Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, good to see you, man. Hey, I was telling Casey earlier, you're pretty much like uh, the co-host of the Dirt Life show now because you're on all the time. Thank you. It's nice. It's nice to do at night. Yeah, totally. Um, our internet's been a little bit slow tonight, so uh, if you can't hear us, give us a little bit of uh, uh, just, yeah, just deal with it for a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, thanks very much, man. So when was the first time you got introduced to this crazy guy over here? We were we were still in high school. Uh-oh. So oh, he, it's been a while. I I met him, a mutual friend, that, and we were buddies for a long time. Um, I remember, like, early times hanging out with family river house some trouble out there but uh it wasn't for what five it was more than that six years before you started working together yeah it, no yeah it was wild because you did riviera and herbs first so it was yeah i think it was we were we were definitely in our 20s we we're definitely we we're grown ups by then. Yeah, we're all old men now, <laughs> yeah. right? But like, it, it's funny to see that though, because like, you guys are basically talking about the exact same stuff we opened the show with, right? Like, just being friends. Yeah, he well, he, like he grew up in San Clemente, which obviously is like oh, big bougie Gucci guy over here. <laughs> but he, uh, dude, he worked at a local off road shop uh, with Jeff Lewis, who's like gnarly in the industry back in the mcpherson day and uh but with that like the opportunities came where one of literally a mutual friend we had work he was getting work done at a shop that oren was working on with uh lewis and uh dude we ended up hitting it off and from there parting being young kids and going to the river and having fun like you said but it wasn't from there dude he was the super it's funny because now looking at it you know obviously he rides with bryce and has a killer time and we worked together for like over 10 years and had a blast together. And then, uh, but with that back in the day, we were all young kids and he was working for, you know, the, the Herbs and with Riviera. The big dogs. Oh dude. Back then it was like the black shirt guys and the red shirt guys. And like, dude, we all idolized them. And Orrin was in there just telling us, you know, we're living out of what they were getting to do in Mexico and the fun times. And what were you doing at the time? Hey, and Orrin, we got, uh, somebody said bad echo. Maybe just turn your volume down a little bit on your phone. Um, what were you doing at the time uh, when he was starting to work on all this off-road stuff? I was doing Jeep speed and literally racing with our buddy, the Hardens. So we were dude, not, not nothing like we were doing today or just having fun in the desert with the family. Orrin, do you remember what years these were? Uh, I mean, that was, I still got, I can still hear the echo. That was what o two o three. Yeah, that's yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we don't have an echo on our side. Um, so if you do hear the echo, you're more than welcome to jump out and jump back in. But man, so o two and o three, like that's a pretty um, well in my mind since I'm so new to off road compared to you guys. That's a pretty like I don't know beginning stages uh, of off road. But that's beginning stages of off road, kind of. You think like well, no? Well, it's funny because dude, that whole if you like for us, dude, the, that was just the days that I think the team, the bigger teams are the bigger teams. Like River Racing back then, that was the teams we all idolized. They just they had a fantastic team around them, and they just had a lot of good people. And literally, dude, lifestyle. They just loved loved to have parties and just they did everything that you wanted to do, right? They're racing trophy trucks and they're jumping and sending it and just. Everything about it, dude. Those guys, I mean, they still do a fantastic job. Even, I mean, Mark Post still racing, you know, Tim and Troy and Ed and all. Now their kids all racing. Like, dude, the, they always did it the right way. Yeah. Like, they had great people. Dude, they all had great people around them, right? And that's, dude, we all had a blast. Was that like those beginning times, Oren? Was that like, uh, did you guys kind of have, uh, I don't know, dreams or ambitions or <laughs> goals? Like, or was it just like, dude, I'm doing cool shit. Like, let's keep growing. At the time, it was definitely like bullshit and <laughs> let's go party at the river. But that was like the reality of it. But then it, it was, you know, stars kind of aligned. We needed some help and I was things up. Riviera was moving with them to go from that and then start working together. That's when like the goals, that's when I really started to see how crazy this dude is. Yeah, it's kind of, cra- it's, it is kind of weird like to think about all that stuff, man. Like, cause at that point, like, now when we're sitting here talking like you guys are at a professional level and doing things that are at a much bigger level than that was but like do you remember how you felt at that time because that's seriously brand newness oh yeah well the funny thing is is like short course we so the reason that the whole thing started was because core got brought back to the west coast so like the very first year of 
core. I bar- we I mean I barely got my program running, and then the second year is when literally was that like Essling or Pro Light days kind of? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually factory Nissan for me. It wasn't, oh, uh, look at this guy, <laughs> Nissan guy. Uh, but no, the uh, it literally came into an opportunity where uh, I had some stars aligned, where I had an opportunity to run a two car team. Did I end up hiring a bunch of Oren's buddies, and we literally in like an off season we ended up decking out a toter home that wasn't mine. I'd, we built a box fan. We did so much crazy shit. And uh, it's funny looking at it now. Like, we literally built this crazy team. Uh, we built a pro light in, I think, 30 days. Really? Oh, yeah. We, we used to, I don't even know why. I look at it now. It's so dumb. But we used to pull all-nighters like it was no big deal. We were doing four or five all-nighters in a week. Uh, being, Is that when you called Monster to get a sponsorship? Right, Keep yeah, all your guys awake? No kidding. Uh <laughs> Yeah, dude, like Bean was there, uh, Justin Smith. Yeah. Dude, he was gnarly back. I mean, even back then, we were working. It was wild. We had some crazy. You remember those days already? Oh, yeah. I'll never, I'll never. <laughs> was insanity to the whole time. Yeah. Oh, it was insane. <laughs> dude, yeah. it sounds like there could have been a whole bunch of good times happening, though. Is there any special moments or, like, any stories that you guys remember from that back then? Well, you know, you know a good one. We're going to talk about dirt bikes. So one time in the off season, I used to own, uh, my parents on 90 acres in Chino and we had like a motocross track and all this stuff. And dude, Oren had his, uh, like all his paperwork for his insurance and all his, you know, it was whatever we're getting ready for the next year. So he had to fill out all his insurance paperwork and all his medical stuff for his, uh, you know, whatever to, for his job. Yeah. Well, he left it on the desk. So we went dirt bike riding and he had snapping his, uh, Tib and fib with the paperwork sitting there never filled it out but that was not even the worst part then he he crashed at the bottom of a hill that the only way out was basically to ride out so me, oh me one of my or my cousin and his buddy took us three hours to to tow him out by strap arm, uh moto straps under his armpits really and, do you remember that Oren? yeah the only <laughs> option was like helicopter ride or <laughs> my friends dragged me up a hill for six hours so. Dude, that's wild. How hurt were you? Like, <laughs> were you smoked? I, I, I mean, I, I got a rod from my knee to my ankle. Also, the, uh, the outcome of that one. But luckily, I did not have any health insurance, so it just wasted any income oh. or money I saved. <laughs> All right, pro tip to all the people that are listening yeah. or watching, please have health insurance health before insurance. you go moto. <laughs> dude. We used to ride, well, it's funny because we rode a lot, dude. We used to ride, like, we'd work a lot. We, I mean, we put in some serious hours, but, like, uh, his friend and my friend, Larry Rossler, with Cowie, he was able to get uh, dirt bikes, and then I was riding for Cowie time. So, dude, we used to ride dirt bikes all the time. So that was our uh, side hobby was going out and trying to, we were racing all the, what were those uh, desert races called? Uh yeah, like all the hair scrambles and hair, stuff. Yeah. All oh, District 37. So you guys were pretty serious about it, huh? Oh, yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. how competitive were you guys? I, I'm just like, when you guys talk about this stuff, I'm just seeing all my me and my friends going, like, riding in the hills and wanting to just send bigger than the other guy or just get, like, battle, like, on a practice track and just, like, I don't oh, know. He Go- fully chewed me out one time because I passed him. He was oh, pissed. really? He, he, then he ran into me because I was stopped for to help some dude on the ground. He's like pissed off at me for stopping. I'm sitting there going like, dude, there's a dude crash. And now he's mad because I freak- did this. Uh, very competitive, man. Very. All you want to do is win. That's hilarious. Uh, Orin, is that true? When, when the company you work for is two people <laughs> and your boss same age and wants to do all the same stuff is crazy competitive it turns into (laughs) dude that's wild man it's cool to hear though because it's literally exactly what we're talking about that whole camaraderie thing like everybody is just down to have a good time yeah but i would say like that's one thing that like as obviously orn and i worked together for like over 10 years so like you know my career changed just learning more about what i wanted to do but orn being along for the ride as far as the opportunities he brought me was one thing that now it's crazy looking at is like you know, we fell in love with jeeping together, right? We built our first jeeps together, uh, or I I built the first jeep, and then we ended up getting him a smoking deal from my cousin on another jeep. Then we we dialed him in with a jeep. Actually, still owns a jeep to this day, uh, but we literally fell in love with jeeping and going out and like once again exploring and going to Moab, Utah, and all these other places with my family. And uh, you know, for Oren, like 
he definitely didn't have a family that was into jeeping. His family was into dirt bikes and going to the desert and Baja and stuff like that. So like, but not for, big four wheel, not, not big four wheel guys. But then for that, like, dude, the love he has for it. Now he's living in Florida with an off road jeep shop. Like for me, that to me, I love seeing the su- success that he has brought yeah. upon himself. Right, like just like you're saying, and through all my partners, and now like when I say my partners, like throughout all the years, like. Dude, we met a lot of good people. We went and explored a lot. We we had a lot of good. We still have a lot of good friends uh, within the industry, and through those, you know, through those relationships that we've built through racing, like you know, for one of for one of the guys on the team to literally go out and be able to start his own shop and have the connections to be able to buy parts at a discount so that he can actually make a living, like. Dude, that's what that's what the sport's all about. Like you know, Dude. to come out and to have success stories after racing. That's what we all want, right? You gotta someday you gotta be able to pay for this without racing involved. Okay, so one thing that's been a big topic lately, um, and especially on social media, or and I think you can get along with this, is helping uh, everybody else that's with you, right? Or being a, a positive influence on the people around you. Like what Casey just mentioned, he's proud of you. You're proud of him. Like those things that you guys built from the ground up, that's a massive, uh, I don't know, undertaking, so to speak. And you guys have got to the point now where you guys have supported each other along the way. I love that. Oh, yeah. Well, he was, when we first started, he was literally number one employee working out of my dad's shop, the shop you went to. Yeah. Literally just right behind my house, just a normal garage behind the house. And now you... Look at the disaster of an empire. By the way, if you notice how much stuff I have, I actually didn't realize it until he left me that he was the reason that I'm such a, I have so much shit. Yeah. Yeah, because he Good left job, him. dude. He blamed me saying, oh, dude, you have so much shit. You, you, oh, and then I go to his shop in Florida. He's got the same damn thing. <laughs> Jeeps, UTVs, jet skis, boats. I'm like, dude, he was the problem the whole time. He's blaming me that I got all these toys. Like, the reason I have all these toys, everybody, is because... Oren got me started. I just now I'm fell in love. Is that true, Oren? It's it's completely backwards. <laughs> I picked up a horrible habit from him. I say yes to everything, just the way he says yes to uh, everything. Uh, Casey is a oh. yes man, but that re- uh, that's the reason he's so successful, right? Uh, yeah, John Huppert's actually chimed in and he said, uh, started out of a uh, uh, yeah his garage with the seventy four Q five or C C J five with a three hundred four. Uh, oh, that yeah. Jeep ripped. Yes. Yes. Dude, yeah, see, it's all those humble beginnings, man. Uh, Oren, do you remember any stories? Like, in fact, I think I su- probably saw Oren the day that you invited me over to the shop, and I, I like, there. met him maybe, yeah. Uh, Oren, you were, when we took him out, he drove that Prolite, and somewhere like Johnson Valley, it rained at Glen Helen. We yeah. took the Prolite yeah. out in the wintertime. You had a little circle track with whoops. It was, I think it was Johnson yeah. Valley, because it was yeah. deep in the desert. Yeah. I don't remember if, yeah. if Oren actually came with us, though. I th- I have a f- impromptu just yes manning it making something happen it <laughs> sounds like every week that we work together in scenarios like that yeah it pretty much is but that that's the way you got to be right like um well just fun fact before the show the internet quit working just like when you roll up to the starting line and you got a wire that's, oh, that's yeah. that messes up on your car right it's the same shit but you guys have been working for, together for so long or in that you know what all that stuff that happens <laughs> Yeah. And that's, you know, the, I, I consider those like the learning years, right? Like I got to work for some big, cool teams beforehand and I was very lucky for those opportunities, but like figuring out how to like really make it happen. Like Casey and I had to figure out a lot of stuff together. Like he said, yes, he lined up some amazing opportunities, but it was up to, you know, we had to figure out how to make those opportunities into like reality, you know, and it was his drive and his being able to connect the dots and making it happen. And I was just the, the dumb idiot that worked however hard it took to to, to push it forward with him. And, and that was really what helped shape kind of where I'm at today, for sure. I yeah, mean, and, uh, well, wife. it's because you guys both work hard. You know what I mean? Like the hard work pays off, right? But like when you're in a position like that, because there's a lot of youngsters that watch the show and that listen to the show. And I think that uh, a pro tip that I'm learning here, um, I'm a big fan of this as well, but is even if you don't know how to do it, just work hard and figure it out. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, you got to have, like, for me, I th- it's funny because, like, what like the, what he's saying, though, is, like, dude, we went out and reached for the stars. Like, we went out and, dude, I literally, it's crazy. Like, I, I was very blessed to have a great family, but, like, I didn't actually have the family backing that everyone thinks I had, which you can say whatever you want. Where, where I was at was, dude, I had to work for it, right? And, like, for me, which that's a whole nother story. But for me, the opportunity to go out and take these opportunities, you have to have a team of people around you. It's not 
one person being above the other. You just have to have a team of people that understand how to get the job done. And like for me, that's like he's saying, like we went out and do we reach for the stars. We literally, I mean, I've obviously traveled the world. We've do we've driven uh, short course trucks at monster jams. We've, tr I mean, we've raced the Baja 1000 in wide open cars. We've raced it in all, I mean, we have done all kinds of stuff that, like he's saying, the diversification of challenging ourselves with all these opportunities only helps make it easier so when we want to do something in the future yeah we, we've already we know how to break and destroy everything <laughs> I, I have crashed and i we have totaled almost everything you could say we have broke blown up motors blown up you name it we have definitely gone out and learned the hard way but by doing that i think obviously it, it definitely helped with the uh the challenges we had to make it better for the future. Yeah, totally. I mean, like when you're thrown in the fire like that, Oren, it really makes you, you have to think and kick ass. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've literally been on fire together in the middle of nowhere, Mexico. <laughs> oh, sleeping in the, in the desert sucked. <laughs> what, tell me, tell me more about this. This sounds interesting. <laughs> we're Casey and I were racing Kurt Leduc's trophy truck, the Baja 1000 with, with Kurt Leduc. And I think we had what? Three chase trucks. Yeah. But if it that. was, uh, it was, it, we were 200 miles from the finish. It was coming up from San Felipe and a high pressure line burst at like 2 a.m. Caught, caught up, the oil caught on fire on the headers and we slid to a stop from like 85 miles an hour to zero oh. and had to use sand to put this trophy truck out before it burned out. Oh my God, dude. How gnarly was it? Oh, for that second, it was freaking scary shit because you're so far from anybody. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy, man. Those stories, like, Clearly, you never forget them. Like, Orange just brought it up. But, like, when you think about the magnitude of what could have happened compared to what did happen, like, you guys got out and did all the right stuff at the right time. Well, the funny part is that my dad and, and my uh, uncle were, like, they were in a Jeep together. And it was, like, 2 in the morning, freaking both tired as hell. But the, it was in San Felipe. It was a shitty whoop section. And my dad and my uncle were, like, arguing because my they, they were smashing their heads into the Jeep roll bars. And, just, you know, they brought, yeah. they went and borrowed all this equipment. Uh, to be able to fix it and like, oh, dude, it was just, it was a comical scene. And Orrin was sleeping on the front tire on the race course because he was so tired. He didn't even like, he didn't go to anywhere. He was literally sleeping on the front tire. That's crazy. Do you remember that, Orrin? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like try to sleep on the tire. I just passed out. Like, <laughs> dude, passed that's out. wild, man. Uh, um, we're going to talk with uh, Sean Berriman in just a sec here. Orrin, you got any funny stories uh, that you've dealt with Casey over the years? Oh, man, I got a lot, but, you know, he said, let's keep it racing, and he didn't really want to go at it too much. I pre-warned my guy. I had to pre-warn these guys. <laughs> I was thinking that they were going to really toss oh, you under. I, that's why I'm glad there's not four or five of them together because they'd all oh, we can do uh, it. ganging up on us. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's, that it's, is cool, though, man. I'm sure you guys have way more racing stories, but we got to do uh, – we got to get everybody on. We're about 15 minutes late, so I appreciate you staying up late with us, dude. It's awesome to see you as always. And everybody, just so you know, you know, track control off road. If you ever have any questions for him, he's, he always is willing to answer. If you write him a message on Instagram, he won't answer your phone call unless he feels like answering the phone call. That's just how Orrin rolls. Oh, okay. But he'll, he'll always answer a question. You want to know about code driving or working on Jeeps or UTVs? He's a great guy for that. I feel like you might be serious. You're half no, serious. And half that's what everyone needs to know. He's hey, but Track and Trail has been doing some pretty cool stuff. Actually, before you take off, Warren, what have you been working on lately? Uh, well, a deal that kind of lined up through Casey is now we're working on axle housings with Curry to do cool stuff for like six by six trucks and a lot of unique, like custom wazoo stuff on the axle side. Oh, with really? Casey on the yeah. East Dude, that sounds pretty rad. Are you allowed to talk about any of it right now? Or are you going to wait and like? Oh, he's a guy. So if, you know those jeeps with six, uh, you know, like yeah. six six tires and six wheels. Yeah, he's, that's his company now. Really? So yeah, so we're providing the axle. Yeah. Dude, that's badass, so man. So he's got the pass through axle. So now it's not a the rear axle is not just floating there. It's actually right. a six wheel drive. Yeah, it's a drive axle, dude. That's great. Do you have any pictures on your social media that we can check out? Uh, not differential many. engineering. We're, we're just getting the ball rolling. Differential engineering is the name of the company. We do have a, an Instagram up. We're getting that rolling, but uh, like any, of these are crazy times to start stuff up with supply chain and how yeah busy everyone is. But we're working it's on it. Pretty wild, there. but that's super cool. Thanks for telling us, man. I appreciate it. Um, well, one of these days, how about we just uh, like uh, when you guys get it rolling, we'll talk about it a little bit on the show. We'll go to Florida. 
go fishing. Dude, that's where it's at, right? That's where I'm at. Uh, all right, Orin. Well, hey, well, I really appreciate yeah, really it. Sure. Please tell the wife we said hello, and we'll see you at the races, bud. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. We'll later, see you later. Man. Uh, man, it's so cool. It's like, just to me, like, I don't know how it feels for you, but it's so cool for me to hear you guys talk about those stories because, I, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the desert, too. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's neat because it, it may, I don't know. It makes me see the smile on your face after you hear all that stuff, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good times for sure. Did, uh, that's probably not the only, t what did he do mostly with you? Was he helping you in in, dri in the racing seat or in driving and co-driving stuff? Or was he so just. So he always rode with me. And then when, uh, but obviously we, when I was, I wasn't even racing short course. Or I was only racing short course when he was a part of the program. That was what. Right, I remember so that. He, no, he helped. He basically ran the team for me. So I just came up with the crazy ideas, and he would literally be the one that helped orchestrate the circus to get it there. And he's the he's the executioner. Yeah, we had dude. We we made some shit happen over the years. Dude, that's pretty cool though, man. And it's good to have like uh, when you know that your support mechanism is going to back you up. Like he's been such an integral part of so many people's racing programs, oh, yeah. right? Uh, Sean Berriman, we got uh, dude. You have so many people that are good dudes. Sean Berriman, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, guys? Dude, just living the dream over here in Southern California. It was really cool of Casey to let us come uh, hang out at the shop, man. We got to see a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, you might have even ridden in some of these cars behind us maybe, huh? Oh, yeah. Started uh, spending quite a bit of time with Casey in those uh, <laughs> side-by-sides lately, uh, the past few years. Uh, so, uh, Sean has been uh, a part of different racing programs, right? But he yeah. he helps your racing program, but uh, uh, currently he has a uh, a Monster Energy hat on. Was that something that you helped him with? Oh, so he, well, he is my, so Sean's basically for me is helps basically, he is my right-hand man for all Dakar, everything to do with rallying Dakar. So Monster Energy stepped up to help make sure that I have Sean in the right seat. So a lot of traveling around the world. Uh, having different teams and different organizations, like I gotta have a. It's rally is very complicated when there's there's a lot of rules, regulations, a lot of things going Logistically. on. Logistically, well, you just want to have somebody that by your side. Like I'm a loose cannon. Obviously, I got dude. I gotta I gotta be calm down sometimes. So Sean does a great job with you know he he has a massive Dakar experience. That's how we actually met. Like he works for the Menzies full time. Yeah. And uh, but his ex but he also has a passion for rallies. So like I met him. The year before we won, I was into cart, totally miserable. Actually, he was. We we saw it. We were literally like day two of the rally. I was ready to yank my co-driver out of the car, and we went to the team manager to try to put Sean in. But Sean was already a co-driver for uh, one of those big trash trucks. Oh, and, really? Oh, he's got gnarly experience in those. Gnarly, dude. I want to have a show with just Sean talking about the big trucks. Period. Hundred percent. He, that he's your guy. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, well, yeah, so this is, stories. again, it's, it's along the same lines of what I was talking about. You just start going through in the camaraderie, and you meet people, and, like, it just happens, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Do so, you remember meeting Casey, Sean? I So I met Casey, obviously, working through Bryce and stuff, going to all the short course races. And so that's kind of where uh, I first met him. But then when I actually started getting to know him was, yeah, that uh, Dakar what was it? 2019. Is that your first year that you went to Dakar then? Yeah, it was. That must have been a pretty big undertaking. Oh, did he? Did we lose him? I don't know if it's us or if it's the uh, the internet for us or the internet for him. But uh, if we lose him, he'll come back or we can invite him back again. But so 2019, that dude, I feel like that was just. Yeah. So my first year was 2019. So we had, I, had a, I actually had a five year plan. Okay. So, uh, my first year was totally freaking miserable. I was miserable from day one. Was it miserable because you didn't understand the undertaking? No, or was it's, it... it's just like, well, I knew the undertaking. There was, a, but like, I, I literally had a co-driver can make a break. Like the co-driver in rally is so important that even more important you, than desert. Oh, 100, I mean, you could drive a hundred miles an hour in the wrong direction all day long and no one's ever going to tell oh. you to stop. Right. So his the numbers that he puts in his head and all the, you know, the, the latitude, longitude, the cap headings, all the, you know, the distances and stuff. There's so many numbers going on that like, yeah, if you, I mean, that's the difference, like on desert, you can go, you know, you might be off a little bit as far as cautions where you're breaking points, but like, but you yeah, also have a GPS file. You know, you know you're on the yeah. course. You, there'd be times and there's the day that there, the year he didn't ride with me. I drove like 25 miles the wrong direction in the sand dunes. 
That's wild. So it's like 45 minutes one way, 45 minutes back. Like, you can't just make up an hour and a yeah, half. Yeah, that blows your whole race. Yeah. You, it, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. And when you, do you remember when you met him, uh, Sean? When you met Casey? Yeah, like I said, it was in uh, short course when he was, when I was with Bryce and everything. I kind of just met him because Casey was uh, racing a pro light at the time as well. So kind of just in the pits, uh, just talking here and there. And then once I found out that he was getting into uh rally and Dakar and all that stuff, we kind of started talking more. And then that year in 2019, when he raced his first Dakar and I was in the T4 truck on the team with uh, South Racing, uh, that's where I kind of met him a lot more. And, and from there, we kind of just built a friendship and it's been like that. Yeah. The past couple of years now. So did you know a lot about the navigation portion of it at the time that you met Casey? Yeah, because uh, so I started doing rally stuff. I actually I'm from South Africa originally. So in 2011, I actually went back to uh, South Africa for three years and worked on the Ford factory team building uh, rally cars for the Dakar and stuff and just learned kind of just just trying it and just being around it and all that stuff. I didn't do a whole lot of navigating, but just being involved with it and always you just pick up on how things are run and all that stuff. So when I came back uh, to the States, back to Vegas, I still was starting to uh, still going on all the Dakars and stuff. And then I've done six Dakars now and four of them. Yeah. Four or five of them in a T4 truck. So I've done quite a few in the, in those big trash trucks. So it's, Dude, it's wild. And, and, just the oppor- and you, you learn everything. Yeah. That's so wild. And the opportunity that, well, you're helping Casey with that. I mean, you got to feel pretty lucky to have a, a person like that too. Oh, hundred percent, dude. I'm telling you, we, I that's badass. I, yeah, because he. So the crazy thing is the tra- like the truck that he was driving was for my team. So he was like, he was actually our support truck. So like, even for that coincidence, that all the teams in the car and literally a guy that's living in Las Vegas working for Menzies that like so already having the relationship and then to go there and now like we I think we flew on the same flight the first year over there. And, Didn't uh, even yeah. know. No, we well we 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 were talking at the time, but like you know, at the time I was so fresh and like dude, the, the, it's it's so gnarly how big the car is. But like just having him to just hang out with and just kind of get the vibe and him explaining, he dude like he knew more of the team than I did. I I was very like Green Island knew you know my engineers yeah. and my my uh, my mechanics and stuff. So. Sean knew more the the whole team, so dude, we're literally just hanging out the whole time. I feel like that's like literally like a match made in heaven. Well, like that's that's well, badass. It, it worked out good. It literally it worked out real good. And he's got he's got like the, the calmness all the time. Where I'll, I I mean we got some crazy stories during I, we we got some crazy stories, but like very very calm and cool when uh, shit was hitting the fan in my head. Really? <laughs> Do you guys have some cool racing stories, uh, uh, Sean? Yeah, where do you begin? I mean, uh, when you spend, especially Dakar, one Dakar alone can tell a thousand stories after 12 or 13 days sitting in a car for hours and then on with somebody. It's, uh, dude, how much seat time do you guys, kinds of stuff. how much seat time do you guys think that you spent together in one Dakar? Like, uh, <laughs> well, you gotta remember, no one tells you, no one tells you that the liaisons, where when you're waking up at five in the morning and driving until 10, a.m. Yeah, five hours liaison. of just... That, that's just liaison. Then you race until 5 p.m., and then there's another three or four-hour liaison after that. Yeah. So, like, uh, the... Li- but I, I got a good one for Sean, because th- this was one of my gnarly stories. We were actually racing in Africa, and I was following... I was We were following... Uh, like, we were top five overall, and we were following one of the minis, and we followed a mini over oh, a cliff. Yeah. And uh, we... Uh, uh, so we... We drove, and a mini had driven off a cliff. It was like 14, 16 feet high. And, oh, dude. Uh, yeah, so the mini fell only... off, totaled itself, and, like, was on its side. And the doors were all off of it. The windows were blown out of it. And, like, uh, was it Stefan Peterhansel? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it wasn't. It's Stefan Peterhansel. He's, like, Mr. Dakar. Yeah. He's the guy in the mini. He's, so, like, a And the car was smoked? Oh, yeah, so he's on his side. They're, like, getting out. Well, we come over to this thing, full tilt, and put the binders on dude i end up getting the car stopped off like a little ledge and like we're we're sitting it's like 15 feet vertical we're hanging by our straps the car shuts off because the fuel pumps all the fuel went to the front shut the car off and we're hanging over and now there's a total mini below us 
No way. Oh, yeah. So now we're, so we're sitting dude, there. Dude, this is like a cartoon. Oh, dude. And now, hey, this is where, like, all I want to do is win. I'm, like, sitting there, Sean, you got to get out of the car. You, like, you got to get out. And we got to, we got to. We Back to up. Get it. So the car wouldn't run. So, dude, well, now the car's dangling. So if he gets out, it's super dangerous and gnarly. So, dude, we end yeah. up, like, before he unbuckles, he opens the window net because it swings and, like, opens the door. And, like, gets his feet, gets everything ready to go. Because I'm full on the brakes on a cliff. Yeah. Can't move because the car like will just. balancing. Oh, yeah. We're, it it, it would have taken nothing. You could have touched the car and the car would have flipped over. Whoa. And landed on a mini up below us. Like a fly land on oh, a concert. Dude, it, we got super lucky with that because that, Stefan's wife uh, was navigating for him. And she was actually climbing out of the car when we came over. If we honestly would have gone over, we would have oh. landed straight on top. We would have killed her. Oh and my same god! With when we, when I was getting out the car, I know the the teetering. I knew if if that thing slipped when I was halfway out trying to get out, it would have smoked me as well. So, and no joke, like it pivoted to a point where the fuel pumps weren't picking up fuel, and Stefan had to come up and actually help me put a toe strap on it, and just with our weight, try and get the back wheels to touch the the ground so that we can pull this thing off and we're talking like literally an inch that the front wheels are holding on it was the craziest That's thing I've wild, ever seen. Dude. Yeah. oh by the way we're in africa like 12 hours from an airport so like holy smokes shit it's a fan it's gnarly dude we got the, we got the car uh stefan and his wife came and strapped it up we pulled the car back they they well they pulled it back we got it running and we still went one Dude, holy cow. <laughs> Dude, that's so crazy. And I'm sure that there's a million more stories that happen in big, long races like that. But oh, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. that's wild, man. And then so, like, when you go through an experience like that, I don't know, like, if uh, how you feel about it, Sean, but is that something like, dude, I'm staying with this guy for the rest of his racing <laughs> career or I'm out? <laughs> no, I mean, you, those are the things you you don't expect it to happen. But when it does happen, it's one of those things, unfortunately, and you just kind of your once your heart rate drops back down you kind of think about what just happened and you move on you just keep going and there's it wasn't his fault wasn't i mean it literally the it was a perfect sand dune to a cliff it looked like you could just there was a maybe just a razor back on the back side but it was just a sheer i saw pictures of it actually of like what it looked like on the back and it was insane uh, we got uh, our boys from KMC, Ryan Guidus. He's joining us, dude. You know this guy pretty well, Casey. I do. I do. Hardy, I had to call him, too. No bad stories. <laughs> oh, is that how it works? <laughs> so behind the scenes, logistically, you guys are preparing the show for me. So thanks, Ryan. How's it going today? Good. Man, you've known Casey for a long time, huh? I think it has been a minute. It's, it's been a while. Dude, it's pretty cool to see that uh, all these stories, though. I don't know if you've been listening, Ryan, or if you just got uh, home from work, but uh, Sean and Casey were talking about one time when they were in Dakar and they were teetering off a cliff. Like, dude, those racing stories can go on and on and on, but it's pretty cool to see that they have that, I don't know, structure to be able to still continue on, man, because those moments get intense. And still <laughs> Say that again. Could you go a little closer? Because we can't hear you very much. Still, they're able to be. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's pretty crazy, right? And then, like, so moving on, like, that's 2019, you said, right? Yeah. So moving on, like, what's the move? Do you, like, uh, call all your sponsors, and like Ryan, for instance, and you say, all right, I'm really into this. Like, I want to do it. And then 2020, you go out there guns blazing with Sean? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, well, basically, uh, we got, dude. It, it really takes a team. There's a lot of, yeah, because the KMC thing was gnarly because we were shipping rims and tires all over the world because the boat and the trucks and everything are flat. Remember, everything is in different states. So the team is based out of, uh, Por no, Portugal, Sean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the team is out of Portugal, but we never race in Portugal. You always race in other, con in other countries. So, like, did they just the logistics that, you know, obviously KMC had to help we are literally shipping wheels around, like, all the way to Africa. You know, when we would go to Dakar, they would ship straight to Saudi Arabia. The year before, we were shipping to Peru. Like, there's a, there's a lot that goes on with all that Dude, stuff. Dude, that's pretty wild. Do you remember going through all that, guidance? Because that's probably, like, a, I don't know. not I don't want to say, like, a logistical nightmare, but that's probably a lot of extra work, man. That's pretty cool that you guys want to support that. I think that was my stint. A little high. Cases for a little bit. Uh -huh. But... 
I, <laughs> but I never had to deal with it. I think it was you guys. We just gave it was just a nightmare for you guys everywhere, right? Yeah. So you, oh, so you just give them the list and they were able to execute on it? Yeah, there's just, yeah, there's just a lot going on. There's just a lot of different things to move in. Dude, but okay, so let's actually talk a little bit about that stuff too. And Sean can probably still relate to it a lot because of what he deals with on a daily basis. But um, like the logistical portion, so it, like we all see on social media, we see you racing Dakar. We think it's going to be a great time. But there's a lot of stuff, like you said, that we don't see. All of the logistical stuff, like you're talking about with Guidus and with Sean. And then there's the liaison portions of it. So what are some of the things that you work with on a daily basis with these two guys that would be good to execute to win? Oh, I mean, well, I mean, first you got to have good partners and good, you know, good parts, right? So like, you know, even with Ryan and KMC, like, obviously you have to go on equipment that's going to win. It doesn't matter how shiny it is or if there's a paycheck behind it, you have to be on equipment that's going to go there and withstand all the torture. But I mean, but as far as like the, you know, with Sean and everything that we did, like, yeah, remember you're driving for 12 days in a row, the amount, the opportunities to fail are way greater than success. So like Dude. we got, I mean, literally the year we won, uh, the year we won, got a cut. We, uh, got in a head on, on the highway with a freaking 12 year old kid that stole his dad's truck. That's sure. wild. Really? Yeah. Literally got a head on crazy deal. We've, oh yeah, we got all kinds. Of, there's, there's stories for days. Cause you gotta remember like our team, it's just, I mean, for the opportunity, the South racing deal, like, I mean, we had 45 people, around us to help make that thing survive you know right. between truck drivers and motorhome drivers and cooks and there's there's lawyers and there's 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 team managers and there's you know you have day mechanics and night mechanics well just on the the building portion of it i know that south racing builds right around 65 cars a year now yeah it's wild dude it's crazy right yeah um, Guidus, you know what's funny is we were talking about earlier, we were talking about Casey got into all this stuff because motocross and his dad and like starting out on PW50s and stuff. Dude, I feel like that's such a, a common thread between all of us. I know, it sounds like the race is for <laughs> Yeah, all of us start like Sean's trying to, hey, he's, got, he's, he's trying to dodge the baby. The, he's trying to dodge the baby. Do you see that, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> he's all walking around looking at the baby. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, congratulations on the new baby as well, Sean. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so do you, when you listen to these stories about like what we just talked about, about motocross and stuff, I don't, is your baby a boy or a girl? Boy. I, do you think he's going to get a uh, dirt bike? You think? He already, PW? He's got him in his garage right now. No way. You already got the <laughs> PW50 or whatever, <laughs> he's or the Stasis? He's yeah. got a KX65. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got it all lined up and uh guidance yeah, whenever you get your kid you're gonna have to have the uh, little mini bike lined up for him too it sounds like i have a little girl oh yeah so you, you think she's gonna want one? Oh, i already have a or everything already so, so yeah she's ready to <laughs> <laughs> dial see it all starts man it all starts with two wheels i love it uh, so guidance how long have you known casey i think i think i met him a couple days but I met him when I first started about six years ago but him with Mike Bell so doing all that one of our favorite people so that was the time back in the day yeah, yeah well it's crazy because well funny like the person that brought me to KMC Wheels was actually Mike Bell like yep. obviously passed away a couple years ago which but solid dude fa fantastic human being but once again met him through the motocross industry when yep. I was racing supermoto uh, he worked at Oakley and uh but once again like the relationships or dirt bikes like that dude was a gnarly human being on a dirt bike and, Anything on, a, with and two wheels. on a bicycle yeah even his kids are uh, every time you ride bicycles with him you just get your ass kicked the entire time because no matter how fast you ride they can literally ride faster everywhere you go hey did you did either of you guys sean or uh <coughs> excuse me guidus did you know that casey did supermoto stuff a little <laughs> bit dabbled hey, i just casey so yeah, big four wheel guy. Did you know Sean? Yeah, I mean, we he told me all kinds of stuff when uh, the amount of hours we spent driving just on <laughs> long highways and just have to talk and <laughs> That's so true. come yeah, up I mean, with all kinds. Dude, of we're stuff. talking seven hours a day on the highway before you race. 
So what's the vibe then in those situations? <laughs> like, all right, so say Guidus and I are going to race Dakar with you guys, and we're going or against you guys. Like, what are we doing? Are we talking like for like fourteen? So in so the car, there's no ra- there's no stereo music, nothing. So like, you're you're literally just in the car, cruising down the freeway with your helmet on. Hot as shit, or is it? Uh, well, there were some mornings it was below twenty five degrees, and then there's some days where it's one hundred and fifteen. So it just depends on what day it is. So you got to be ready for it all. Titus, are you ready to drive the liaison stage for seven hours in weather like this? <laughs> I need a stereo. <laughs> I think the longest stage, the liaison I did the one time in a T4 was the, it was the last stage. I think it was like 2016 or something like that. So you literally on the last stage of the Dakar, you finished and then you still had to drive nine and a half hours to get to the finish on the highway. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Dude, that's... I actually didn't even cross the finish because I had to catch a flight because it was such a long liaison. I got out the truck. I had my bags with me. I was still in my racing overalls, got in a taxi and went straight to the airport and flew back to, to the States before even going over the, the finish line over Dakar. Dude, that's wild. And, okay, so what's the rules then? Are you, Do you have to sit in the car till the liaison is done or can you get out? Driver out? does. Dri- technically, the dri- well, in a T3, you have, three, you have two co-drivers. Right. So, like, I'm sure there's ways around all that stuff. Dude. Well, like, and he wasn't going. Technically, the, the T4, because they're a support truck, like, he wasn't going for the overall. Like, for him and I, when we were racing, dude, the rules are in. The rules are insane. Every, there's rules for everything. So, if guy, so if guy just is driving and I'm passenger, can I get out before, like, in the middle of the no. liaison? Or do I got to wait till the liaison's over? No, you drive the whole, you're no. in the car the whole time. No one else is allowed to get in the car ever. But I, normally, if some anybody people, does you're out you're disqualified that's right oh dude that's wild so you could have you could have like the the navigator can drive uh for the driver so that you can take turns sleeping uh but you have to be in the car and same as like obviously guys on bikes if your vehicle ever touches a trailer or you get out you're done dude that's you know, wild guy I, I did drive i drove the whole way because i andrew short and ricky Braybrook were talking shit so i didn't want to be called car life guy over here yeah i i, did I remember have to, I, I did move the car like 15 feet uh, to gas the fuel station. station the one day yeah <laughs> i literally drove the whole way just to make sure that ricky and them wanted to talk shit on me that's funny so he, he made it a point too because <laughs> when i did get in to try and like just move it he's like no 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 i got this i'm not really yeah 15 days <laughs> man 15 days i was like no way because they, dude they're like we all had like the fun part about the car is the fact that you're living in a bivouac so there is no like you're not you're all together with as a community. Right. So, like, dude, between Ricky Brabeck, Mean American, uh, Johnny Campbell, uh, you know, you had Jesse uh, Jones, AJ Jones, you had, you know, Andrew Short, like, dude, all these American guys hanging out. Like, you only have so many guys that can even speak English. Got it. So, you're, dude, you're, you got to go out there and hang out. But, and everyone's always talking shit. So, like, if there's a way, if you're, if there's a weak link, you, they're going to talk shit. That probably builds like the, your profile and builds your uh, confidence and stuff though too. Oh, right? Yeah. Like dude, cause you have to remember you're eating in like the, in the bivouac eating like the eating halt. Well, before COVID, like, you know, you go and eat dinner in like a big group of people. Right. So like just that, the camaraderie of hanging out with everyone, it, it makes it a lot more fun. Dude, that is wild though. So guy just said he's out. Like I kind of <laughs> feel the same, like uh, as he does, but dude, imagine if we got the uh, opportunity to experience something like that, Ryan, like, what Casey's saying would like light a fire under our ass to be able to do better. Like, so we'd probably be able to step up to the plate if we had to. I just remember a staff talk about all the things he had to do, how to read the map. That's freaking, that's above my. <laughs> yeah. So how, well, how, well, one thing where, so here's what, that's funny. You say that one thing that I've always, I've wanted to do and I want to do, obviously I, I don't even know how to do it. I, I do know how to do it a little bit, but one thing is to go out and literally plan out a route and yeah. have and do a ride where like Sean it could help cr- we can create a road book Andrew Shore could like or Ricky could help us create a road book yeah but we'll we'll print out all the pages we'll put all the you know cuz oh we'll, and do like a practice route yeah, and we'll and literally go and like at the river which we I mean there's all kinds of stuff in Vegas area in uh Mojave Valley Havasu area but go out and do like a f- 75 mile ride where we invite everybody who wants to learn you know you get your best co-driver you've ever had in your entire life that he's the the he's your guy he's your guy and uh we'll put him in a car 
and uh, with all the right equipment. And all you got to do is drive to the finish line. All right, guide us. I got a pro R. Sign us up. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do want to do that. I'll, this winter, I'll try to line something up. We'll get a bunch of people, and we'll, and we'll go out, and Sean can help explain the road books. And literally, we'll we'll go out and do it. And hey, we should put uh, Ryan Edwards and James Hill in the same car and see how they do against us, guys. Do so you think they could beat us? <laughs> Edwards is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like that would be pretty fun, though. I really do. Those are kind of cool ideas. And uh, so. Uh, let me just bring up a little marketing point here. So hearing creative ideas like this, Ryan, from Casey, that's a lot of the reason that he creates value in his, in his racing program or in his uh, ambassador program, whatever you want to call it. And I think that's a huge thing that uh, a lot of the people that watch this show can take away from this is coming up with creative ideas like this and executing on them does actually help out quite a bit. No, it does. I mean, what's cool with Casey is, I mean, side. I'm Casey. Go something. You should see the friends back. Photos, video, like assets that are social media. Use so I mean, professional program. That you know, an athlete, but it's everything else in. So Casey, one thing, but everything just my. Yeah, totally. So it's well-rounded. Casey and I talked about this a little bit before the show, too, is that he has a media team. Not that everybody can afford a media team, but my media team is right here in my hand, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, and, you, you got to start somewhere. Right. Absolutely. But, but you're doing a lot of those things, and it doesn't just mean that you have to do it on this grandiose level. You can do it by just going down to your local, I don't know, shopping mart with your buddies and just, like, putting up your stuff and providing some sort of return. I think the biggest thing you do, I mean, anyone can do at this point is just showing something that's entertaining for other people to watch yep. or giving them an experience that one day they want to go experience the same thing or, you know, even for that is, you know, showing the capabilities of something, right? The, you know, for us – we drive a lot, like with the King of the Hammers and, you know, Dakar, uh, going to do a trail hero where you're just completely smashing on products. Yeah. A lot of that is, you know, some people just care about they want to buy the same product for their vehicle. If You can definitely get those sponsors out there that will pay you the money. But Hey, you products, got some pretty cool are, shit on these vehicles, oh, dude. Yeah. Well, we beat the living shit out of them, man. And I, the, here's where I'm at. It's not that I don't like a lot of money but i don't like working on anything <laughs> i don't i don't want to go and break rims because they're junk like yeah. th th these rims actually it's funny these rims uh actually half of them are bryce Menzies. <laughs> i got but the uh these rims race king of the hammers did the entire hammers and then did denora the and besides some rock rash on the rings Hey, when you get rid of these, I'll take them and I'll use them and I'll have the same stories. No, we, can't, we can't get rid of them. <laughs> they're, no, very, they... they're very precious right now. <laughs> uh, hey, so both of you guys, like, let's just say, uh, actually, Ryan, why don't you answer this first? If you could drive with Casey uh, in any vehicle that he has or any event that he goes to, what would you pick? Would you go in a Jeep like on the Rubicon? Would you go uh, out in the desert? Would you go in a Razor out in like, let's just say the Sonora Rally or something? Like, where would you go? Like, what's your vibe with all the stuff that he does? I mean, I've been in a UTV. I don't know one part for me. And I remember just in Moab, just like having mm -hmm. him drive things, just like, you're going to go up that? Hammer down. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> and he pulls up everything. Oh, hero. There was one part where I didn't want to do it because I think it's like, I think rolling up. But I'm watching, he's like, and you know, I was just watching it. But I think rock related. I feel like that's pretty cool, though. Like, and that actually says a lot about one of the subjects that we were going to talk about uh, is Casey's uh, driving prowess or driving techniques and stuff like that. Uh, what does it say there? Uh, KMC, send this. I can't read it because of the glare. Uh, Clint says SR5, some wheels. Uh, they probably make them for your car, man. Uh, it talks a lot about your driving skills and your driving prowess. You've been doing it for a long time, but there's very few people that can execute on stuff like that and have the confidence to do that. And you have a lot of versatility in your driving, like what Ryan is saying. Um, for a guy like me, that's a little bit more of a green green than you are. 
I would have a lot of trouble going up some of those rocks. So is that just like a practice makes perfect thing, or is it? I think it is, but you know, it's funny. Like we, Owen and I were talking about racing hare and hounds, and going like think about the trails that you race on on dirt bikes, right? All the everything you do on a dirt bike, the the similarity for me. Well, I guess now I don't think it's that gnarly, but I mean, there's some trails that make people very uncomfortable, especially in Sand Hollow. You can put a UTV in a very bad situation. I, were you there at the yeah. time when Dustin and all of them were there? When Dustin fished the punch. Yes. <laughs> that was, dude, we, yeah, there's some boys. The problem is everyone put peer pressure, man. I'm not going to say no. And neither is any of our friends. That's the problem. Yeah, that's what ag- bad that's a, influences. All of us, even at that <laughs> car, you had bad influences. Yeah. Uh, we had a comment come in. I forgot who just wrote it in, but are you going to bring the trophy Jeep to Crandon? To, no, it's getting some. It's actually cut the whole front. It, the whole front's gone. Oh, Vegas so, Arena, doing, and then you just yeah, chop doing, it up. Doing portals on the front. It's getting a whole new transfer case. Getting she's she's getting a lot of love next year. Dang. Big year for next year. That's gonna be wild. <laughs> uh, all right, so Sean, if you couldn't ride uh, with Casey in the current car that you're riding in, which is the Razor, what other car would you run a ride with him in? I think the Trophy G probably. Oh, go I think for we'd have some spin in that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, dude, we'd have some fun together. Big horsepower guy yeah. right here. Oh yeah. Well, dude, he, I mean, dude, he's been around the men's. He's, he obviously knows how to go fast. So. Well, not only that, but he's like, <laughs> dude, I'm still like, he, he's my favorite part of. The, I'm sorry, dude, but he's my favorite part of the show because I love the trash trucks. Dude. <laughs> I love the trash trucks. I, everywhere I can we tell go, you stories for days. Everywhere you go, that's all everyone wants to ask about, bro. He had this one time. He was sitting in the middle. The guy in the middle of the back. Guidance, would you do that? Absolutely. Yeah, see? see, I tell you, dude. The Never. First year I did. Yeah, I... <laughs> the, the guys that he rode with, his buddies are gnarly. How wild does it get? Oh, so the first year I rode in a T4, I rode with two Spanish guys. They spoke zero English. And on day six, we were going down the road wide open and the driver steps off to the side of the road there's this big old mound we probably i think i paced it out it was like 60 or 70 feet we jumped we got air landed and the driver broke his back no way they're getting that gnarly so we had to heli him out broke his back we had to heli him out and then I sat in the right seat and the, the, the guy that was in the right seat drove the truck and we finished the next week, just the two of us. And I had to navigate to him in Spanish. And so I had uh, terminology just like rock, caution, left, right, from English to Spanish on the dash. So I would navigate and then try and translate it in Spanish so he understood it. Holy cow, Guidus. You got a lot of pressure on your on yourself now, dude. <laughs> well, the wow. other thing... If you, they're not to like when you're winning and you're in the front, it's all easy because you're getting done by like five to ten p.m. Dude, there was a time that they fin- they flipped over in the like fog, spent the night up in a truck upside down, slept there. The next day, another trash truck came and flipped them over. Then they had to go flip somebody else over. They got to the finish line at like eight in the morning to then literally turn around and start the next day ten minutes later. Dude, that's so wild. Guidus, I don't know if we could pull this <laughs> off, man. I don't know if we're man enough. No. <laughs> you got to see the photo. If you had the photos, if you ever see Sean, you got to see the photos. He literally slept in the sand dunes. It was di- like super foggy and like wet. Yeah. And they slept in a truck upside down. The truck was literally upside down all night. That's wild. <laughs> so you're like sleeping on the roof, but on the oh. gravity. Well, Dude, that's got, so crazy. It got so cold. Uh, so the two guys slept outside. So I was like, screw this. I'm getting back in the cab and just made myself comfortable and closed and tried to close everything up. So my body would like keep it sealed. Cause they got, got fr- and you know how the desert is at nighttime. It drops. Dude, that's wild, man. Holy cow. This is like all hearing all these stories. We could probably have a full episode just on Dakar stories. Oh, bro, man. It's, it never ends. It's pretty There's wild. So many gnarly ones. Dude, that's so crazy. Uh, all right, Guidus, what uh, kind of stuff do you guys have working with uh, Casey for the rest of the year? Uh, just trying to get him by the end of the year and all that <laughs> stuff. It's been a work in progress. Get Polaris, Black, Five Blog, 
along with everything. Just um, hopefully, he's ready to stand for him. Be fun. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Would you be down to do that? I think, are, are, they, are they doing it this year? Yeah, yeah. Dude, that I'll would be pretty that. rad. We'll do that. We gotta go see if we don't crash them in the rocks first. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, this guy's got a lot of events <laughs> going on. Uh, but that would be cool to see him out at the sand scramble, like yeah. you said, guys. I, I would love to, if. Yeah, if if we're well, that actually yes, yeah, so if we don't break all of our stuff and go out and be idiots too gnarly, then we'll probably be there for sure. There you go. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on, Guidus. We're going to get Aaron Casada on here, too. So thank you very much for always being a partner of the show and obviously helping Casey out, too. It's rad to connect. Of thank you, Ryan. You all right, man. We'll see you later. Uh, so, Sean, we're going to uh, just finalize all this stuff with you. And just uh, the only other question that I kind of had for you was, where do you see, like, if you had to take a guess, where do you see things going with uh, you and Casey in the future? Are you going to participate with him anymore, or how things working? Yeah, no, definitely. I think there's uh, quite a bright future ahead of just, I mean, all kinds of events. Like this year, I mean, I rode with him at King of the Hammers, did all pre-running and all that stuff, and unfortunately we didn't make it too far <laughs> in the race, but... I flipped well, her over there's, backwards. There's... Good job, dude. <laughs> Hey, at least it wasn't a far walk back. Yes, yeah, the, the bright side. <laughs> That's <laughs> but yeah, no. There's there's gonna be all kinds of We're, events, and we gotta go back. We gotta re- we haven't, dude. COVID hit 2020. We won the car two weeks later, or what? Or two months later, and the world shut down. Yeah, gotta, everything got wanna, flipped gotta, upside down. We gotta go back and redeem ourselves. That's that is one of the there. There is a day where we will go back. Yeah. So how was that experience? And we're going to get Aaron Casada on here in just a second, but I would like to end the, the conversation with Sean about that. Like, how was the uh, the whole experience for you at Dakar? Because the first year is really stressful and then you go out and you win and you bring home the title to the United States. Like, that's a phenomenal achievement for anybody's life. Uh, but what everyone does, it's it's the hardest that w- it's the hardest thing that I think we well for sure having a partner that can understand and relate and be the calm source is that the amount of pressure that was on us was in freaking sane. Like, you know, the news and the media, cause they're right. There's media news all the time. And there's pre- like, there's people asking questions like every single minute you're out of the car and like, right. So stuff. it's not like you're just there to race. No, you have to- but the, here's how I look at it. Imagine racing the Baja 500 mm-hmm. and a hundred miles from the finish. You're going to stop and sleep. And they're going to interview you going like, so it looks like you're going to win the race. So what do you, how do you feel about winning when you still have 100 miles to go, right? For us, it was 250 miles. But like we, the, the pressure, you have to sleep knowing that, you know, there's, there's 14 days. And like we took over the overall lead at like halfway mark. And at that point, every day, the, the news is waiting for you to buckle, right? That's what Americans do. We've completely gone there. And year after year, something always seems to happen to the American. Right, because they want the story. That's, that's, yeah. That is the story, right? Oh, we there it is. You finally, you know, you, you guys buckled. But, like, for us, like, to go in, like, the last two days, like, especially the last night, is the fact that, like, we have everything to lose, right? Everything is there, all that pressure. And now you have to sleep on it. You have to literally go to bed knowing that you got to get up and it's drive. exactly the opposite of motocross and short course it's everything that you've never and like there's nothing like it in America. i've never in my life had that that i there's nothing i could train for to even mimic it racing the ball 1000 it, you know you're it's already the same you're, in the, you're in the moment here you have to completely get out of the moment you have to sleep because if you don't sleep you're going to be tired the next day and so now i understand why you're saying that that sean is so important because he has to not just deal with the directions he has to deal with you oh the, dude so how is that, Sean? Because that, that, that's pretty wild thinking about that. You know, it's I've heard some some stories from Aaron because obviously he's ridden with you and stuff and, and Oren. They're like, watch out. There's going to be some moments. And I, to be honest, there hasn't really been a ton where I've had to kind of coax him off the ledge, maybe one or two. But for the most part, I mean, he stays pretty, pretty calm. There's... It, it, you know how it is. Everybody wants to put the helmet on. It's you get serious and things happen and situations happen. But for the, I mean, he seems to be pretty good. And there are some times where I kind of have to say some words. And I got. Here, let me just let me get on my la- last day. It, the night I was sleeping, I went through my entire car in my head of what, what if we broke, how would we fix every piece in the car? Like yeah. to get the finish line. And what 
the only thing that we had a 45 minute lead. The only thing in the car that I couldn't fix in my head in 45 minutes between, you know, between Sean and I, we can fix a lot of things. So like, I was like the steering rack would take us an hour to fix no matter how, if, you know, our teammates were there to help us, like, and we had a spare one, it's just a big, it's yeah. a big job. So like, dude, for some reason that day, the, the car had a ton of bump steer. And like, I, I think there was a shock dilemma thing that I'm not, we don't even need to get into, but it, that next day, so you were like, "Oh shit!" Oh, so and that night, the la- so Sean does all the drivers' meetings, and they tell you it's gnarly navigation, sand, rocks, blah blah. So Sean had a some. We were in a technical area that would be very crucial in the point. I had a, I had Sean unbuckle his seatbelts and climb through the window and adjust my shocks and on the ra- while racing. Really? I had to. I was gonna, I was losing my freaking mind. That the shot, the only thing I couldn't fix in the car was a bump, like was the steering rack. So and you here, just soften up the shocks and let it take a little less. Yeah, that, yeah. dude, that's <laughs> Sean. Were you okay with that? Because that's pretty wild. Uh, that that was definitely a moment where I kind of looked at him. I was like, "Are you are you being serious? Like I'm trying to keep pace, and because it's the last day, I also don't want to mess up because I this is this is it. Like, <laughs> if I screw this up, we could. I've seen people throw Dakar's away on the last day. Dude, so talk I'm about stressed. pressure. Yeah, well, and him. now I got to climb through the window and adjust some shocks on the speed <laughs> section. I'm just like, but we did it. I mean, we, well, <laughs> we, we got did through it. it. So, okay. Well, and so one thing that I'm learning here is like, uh, and I've known you for a long time, but I don't know a lot of these detail things, but I can tell that you're able to compartmentalize a lot of these things, right? So you think about all these things, but you're able to put it off if it doesn't need to be thought about. And then you're able to retract and put it back into place if it does need to be addressed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I fully I literally thought about every single part of the entire car. Like, That's wild. But the problem, the funny thing at the end of it, I didn't know that there was a, there was four waypoints. Remember, he's telling me where to go. It right. can, I can go left and I can go right. But there, like, there's guys getting lost all the time. So we could see a car ahead of us going the wrong way. So if he makes that, if he got lazy, like went out and adjusted the shocks and got lazy and just said, follow that car, could have thrown or hold the car away. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he's, He's still trying to pay attention to where I'm going. While oh I'm my gosh, dude! Yelling in his ear the about hardest sh- thing as a navigator is seeing another car go another direction, and you trusting your gut to say no. I know I'm right, and we need to go left instead of right, and making that choice. Because once you commit, you got to go, and either it works out or it doesn't. And it you feel, I mean, it's a huge accomplishment when you're like, hell yeah, we we went the right way, and we didn't follow that other guy. Cause that guy got lost. There's been many times where I've seen valleys that people are turning around and you get into a panic and you don't know what you're doing or like you're trying to figure out where you're trying to retrace your steps backwards and where you got lost. Cause it's not just a matter of leaving a trail behind you. When you turn around, you then got to pick up where you were, recalculate all your distances and all that stuff. Oh, and make cause sure everything you get changes back to where you yeah. are. Yeah. And you've added, uh, total distance. So whatever you drive backwards, you got to think in your head, how, how far did I drive? Now I got to subtract that because I've just gained that from going in the wrong direction. Dude. Otherwise everything else won't make sense. So what, like exactly what you're saying, driving is in Dakar is not easy, but it's easier. Oh wait, no, no, no. Like, like he said, he could easily throw my whole race away by telling me to go left instead of right. That's why you're saying it's so important. Oh dude. Like, uh, yeah. The, wow. Yeah. Oh Yeah. No, Dude, no, and the pressure that just rally stuff. There is no like in the states and everything, pre running and all that stuff. Your guy, your your navigator is there to to be able to make good notes for you and be a good tire changer and just. But you're at the end of the day, like once you've pre ran so many times, these guys know the course. There's markers. There's all that stuff. When you race rally, that guy in the right seat, if he's not with you, you will not go a hundred yards in the right direction. Yeah. You have to, it's such a team between the driver and navigator in order to finish those races Dude, in the motorcycle guys. Yeah. We could talk about that for a whole yeah. time too. Yeah. That's wild. All right. So the only other question I have for you guys about uh, Dakar before we get Aaron Casada on is what was the gnarliest thing that you guys ate when you were over there? He eats more. He eats all that shit. Oh, he gets wild. I, I, <laughs> this guy's gnarly. You always gotta try it. Once. So orange, dude. Both these guys are all. Sick. No, I'm not. I'm not trying it, all I, that I, stuff. I did uh, mac and cheese and chicken in my motorhome. I'm on Casey's yeah, he team. He's like his kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he literally would go and eat the. So all the food is always in a sauce. 
So that's how it works. So you never really, you actually never see the texture because you can't see the food. Yeah. They always put it in a sauce, a white sauce, a red sauce, a green sauce. Yeah. But no matter what, the the fish, the meat, it's always in a sauce. And you're not about that? No, not like, dude, we're going for the win oh, yeah. This guy's eating like something, something and a green sauce. And, and like, you're just waiting for him to have a blowout? Oh, no, you're dude. <laughs> like, no, he, dude, his stomach it can handle all that. I'm like, dude, I was stressed <laughs> out the whole time, like eating anything that was making me feel like I was at home. Dude, I would probably do the mac and cheese too. Uh, what was the gnarliest thing that you ate? Do you remember? Uh, nothing that really stood out, but there's some definitely crazy taste. I don't know what they what it was. I couldn't tell you. I never tell you. I ate it. I tried it and <laughs> I mean, I think going in Morocco when we did the Morocco rally, driving down the roads and seeing all the storefronts with all the skin goats hanging like every Ugh. store has like five or six goats hanging upside down that are skinned and that they're just going to cook them up for you real quick. And Ugh. yeah, I know it's not my jam. Yeah, I'm dude, not, I'm not uh, into it either. I'd probably have the hardest time eating if I went to a rally like that. Uh, all right, Sean way, we really appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, what do you got going next? Like when are you going to meet up with Casey again? I don't know. Uh, I think I'm, 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 I'm sure sometime hero. soon. Trail hero. Is that where you, yeah, you yeah, it'll be. Tell him to come to you gotta come to Utah. Get him a, he's got to get him and his wife and the baby out. out of the house now. They're, yeah, sounds like you're going to Trail Hero, dude. <laughs> Sand Hollow, baby. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Sean. Really appreciate. It. We're gonna get Aaron on in just a second here. Uh, all right, man. Well, hopefully we'll see you at the races soon. Thanks, guys. We'll chat later. Nice chat. Later, dude. Th- those are some crazy stories. Do they bring back little memories and stuff for oh, you? Yeah, it's funny because you you forget about all this stuff, and and. It's it is wild. It's an adventure for sure that everyone needs to know about. Yeah, it's a crazy adventure. Like, and I, just to have the experience that you ha- have had to have that is pretty cool, man. I would like everyone to come experience. He's one that I want to get out and come and do it as well. So now we have uh, Aaron Casada on the line. What's up, dude? How are you? Hey, what's happening, guys? Oh, we're just hanging out, man. So Casey was talking with Sean and uh, guide us a little bit about uh, Dakar and stuff like that, man. You've got to experience some pretty cool stuff with Casey as well. What's most of the stuff that you do? You ride in the trophy Jeep with him? Um, I'm the leftover guy. So <laughs> anything that Oren doesn't want to do, anything that Sean doesn't want to do, I'll get in the car. I'm uh, always down for a good time. Trophy Jeep guy, dude. He's he's big power guy. Oh, big power uh, guy. Let's let's be or. This is this is my uh, brother that my creativity side and the uniqueness of finding opportunity. Yeah, he's very much alike. We we bet we are we go pre run in Baja for you know a week, and we just come home with fifty new ideas and and create you know like you said like off the racing subject. Obviously, he works at Monster Energy. Uh, he does a great job, and like for us to to have the ability to go and just bounce ideas off each other and to, and to create new opportunities, not only for ourselves, but for other people involved. Right. You know, those that he, we, we do a lot of unique, crazy things together. Well, I like that though, because that uh, affords you opportunities, right? Just by coming up with the, these ideas and stuff. And I think that there's a lesson to be learned in just that statement is because a lot of the younger people that do or don't have sponsors and the things that every off-road racer wants is just, they should be themselves and do like what you're talking about, right? I mean, oh, that's yeah. what really works. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, I mean, you definitely got to go out and figure out who you are. And obviously with the people that have just been online tonight, I've had a fantastic support team around myself. But we're all we're all supportive. I, you know, I, I cherish everybody's uh, family life and, and all the, you know, the friendships we all have. And, you know, like us, you know, we, we spend a lot of time together in Mexico and on all these other trips that we do uh, with Monster Energy. And, yep. You know, and on top, I mean, we we just have his, his family's fantastic. We go and do a lot of stuff at, at the river, and we're actually I'm taking I'm building him a jeep tomorrow. He doesn't even we have to talk after this. Oh, really? I, I build it that red jeep back there that's bone stock that the guy was carrying the suspension. Yeah, I'm gonna build him a jeep in two days. My mechanic's not one of my mechanics isn't even here today. He'll surprise him tomorrow morning unless he's watching. I'm gonna build a jeep tomorrow so that he can come on, on the Rubicon. Nice, really? Are you stoked on that? <laughs> oh, I'm pumped. Never been. Dude, that sounds like a good time, man. So, all right, so there's that camaraderie coming back in again, right? Yeah. Help, helping each other help, you know, get out and have fun and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Did, hey, excuse me, Aaron, do you remember when the first time that you met Casey was? Screwed me, a PBR. Um, I, I really? think that was probably one of the ones. Early on at Monster, when I, right when I first started, uh, Casey wanted to go to PBR. 
And so we went and he was talking shit like, oh, that doesn't look that hard. I do that. And I'm like, OK, well, we'll we'll set it up. And I think that like the next two weeks, like two weeks later, we set it up for him to go to the PBR training facility and uh, go ride a bull. And we did a whole little video project on it. There was the activation site. See, that's a problem. Yeah. You know, when some guys talk shit and then yeah. it just goes away, yep. he freaking wasn't that guy. It made it execute? Uh, yeah. Literally, we went and rode bulls. It was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Dude, that is pretty <laughs> dumb. I've done, dude. O- O-Ring said the leftover guy. He's laughing about <laughs> it. Uh, uh, let's see. I think I can't really see because it's so... Uh, Hostile Inc. Uh, said Casey is one of the raddest guys in the motorsports uh, world. I agree, sure. man. And then, so that's actually something that we should talk about, Aaron, because um, you guys do a lot of other cool stuff. Like, I just, I came to the shop, and I don't know if you guys can see all the way, but there's a Jeep that's kind of behind us, and there's uh, another project car that's being built. You guys do a lot of stuff that's not necessarily dirt-related. You also do other stuff that's pretty fun, too, in the motorsports world, like Hostility said. Yeah, I mean, dude, like, uh, we went this year uh, to uh, Bike Week in Florida, and I built a, a drift Jeep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Aaron gave us the opportunity when, you know, one of his, uh, you know, one of his projects was basically putting on a bit, big old show at, um, G, uh, not Jeep Beach, but uh, Daytona Bike Week. And, Bike you Week. Know, giving us, once again, like, giving us, coming and giving us the opportunity to figure out a way to go out and put on a really good show. One for me, tying in Jeep and tying in all my brands, um, taking the Polaris Razors and jumping them in front of the crowd and, you know, doing burnouts in Jeeps. It just really gives us the opportunity to, you know, expand our horizons yeah. as far as meeting new people. Well, dude, plus it's fun, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. We just had a comment so that came in that said Aaron is badass. Yeah, we agree, man. <laughs> uh, but so what's it like to ride in the trophy Jeep with this wild man? The thing is insane. One of the most fun vehicles I've been in. Yeah, so I barely got to actually see it at Vegas Torino. That's the first time I've got to oh, see really? that beast. Yeah, so I only got to walk around it for the three seconds that I was in your in your pits or whatever. But, dude, that thing is pretty wild, Aaron. Like, what does it feel like when you're sitting in the in the Jeep? I mean, because, first of all, this dude can drive. It's insane, the progression. Like, through the years, I think it's been about six or seven years since I've been riding with Casey, but... Um, you know, Casey is always pushing the limits and always testing and trying to get it better. And from where it started to where it's progressed, where it is now, just like he's cutting the front end off, doing portals and all the upgrades, like it just keeps getting better and better. Dude, it's so wild to think like the first version of the trophy Jeep. Did you think it would come this far? No. Well, it's crazy. Yeah. Like you said, we, we didn't really know what we were getting new because I'd never raised. Everyone thinks I raised desert. I was a short course guy, man. Right. Lo- so like literally uh, or and I went out and raced the Magpul trophy truck, got the opportunity with Magpul to come out and do more stuff. And then, uh, when Orn moved, I remember though, when you did that though, you were a little timid at the, oh, you shit, wanted to I do it, but oh, we knew nothing like yeah. no chase, tr- like Orn said earlier, like no chase trucks, no nothing. And then meeting, you know, obviously then at the time, like you're saying, like, dude, right when, uh, Aaron, seven, six, seven years ago now, it's crazy. Time flies, but with him due to instant connection, uh, then hitting it off. And then when Orn moved to Florida, I'm like, dude, I need somebody to ride with me that I need somebody that's, it, I got to have a very unique type of person. Everyone's very mellow. Aaron's yeah. mellow. Orin's mellow. Sean's very mellow. Cause like I get a little riled up sometimes. <laughs> get, get a little, I get a little feisty, a little moody, but you know, that's one thing that like when you're going that fast, like in the, you know, the trophy Jeep or any off-road vehicles, when you're going that fast, like you really have to have trust in somebody. Like it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like right. you got to have that trust and like to have that support system for me to go, you know, he'll never put me in danger. And I tr- really try hard not to put him in danger. Right. So like him really focusing on the notes and focusing on the terrain to make sure that we're not going to drive that thing off a cliff. Right. Like that's, those are the type of things that you got to have a hundred percent trust in that co-driver. Well, one thing that I'm noticing, Aaron, you probably noticed this because you've known Casey for so long, is that um, he puts a lot of trust in other people, right? Like, obviously, in his business life and all of the things that he does with his racing career. Um, but he's good at understanding who can do what well, right? And so he's putting you guys in these positions because he knows that you guys can help him and then vice versa. He can help you. And those things are really, really cool, not just in racing, but in life in general. So you've got to respect that quite a bit. Oh, totally. Um, it was wild. Even before when Casey was talking about wanting to do a rally in Dakar, he had asked me if I wanted to learn and uh, do the rally stuff. And 
I know my limits. I know what I'm good at. I can't do quick math in my head. Like we'd be so lost. Like, um, obviously appreciated the opportunity and the consideration, but it, it's been awesome to get to know Sean. That's kind of how I met Sean. And, uh, I think that first trip is when I went to Morocco with those dudes and got to see firsthand rally. I was in, uh, Saudi when, when Casey won as well. And, it's been awesome. We went to Brazil with them last year for the Sertos rally. and That's cool. Um, yeah, so it's cool that. to see that. And then I really like that you can afford these people the opportunity first. And then second, that they can support you, but you understand what they're good at, right? Like, not that Aaron is limited, but you understood that Sean oh, would be yeah, a better fit for needs. you. And you guys had the, the had the the talk together and said, Hey, you know what? This is going to be the best for everybody. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we do, we all got to be real with each other at some point, right. but I would like, it is funny. Like now you say that, like for anyone out there, like having a support system, like Sean and I racing, we had a lot of pressure on us, but I, you know, I also had a team. We had a humongous team around us, but like I had, you know, Aaron and you know, Aaron's boss, Dave, both were there supporting like to have that support from monster with us, as more support, not putting pressure on me, but helping me stay calm. During yeah. the route. Like I had support from, you know, monster energy at a level that like, it wasn't a financial level. As far as when we were there, it was the level of like, they were there to support me, whether we won or we lost, we had a bad day or we, we had a good day, but you had a focus and a goal. I had, I had people that literally were there to basically do whatever it took to get me to be to that finish line. All right. So let me ask both you and Aaron a personal question then. So I've, I've understood that, um, over the past 10 years or so my life, I really enjoy focusing on a goal or milestones and reaching these certain things, whether it was in racing, being a champion, whether it's growing a business, all of these things, right? Do you guys feel that same way and associate the team to be able to get those goals? Oh, I do. Absolutely. I think, you know, obviously with the brand, like there's, all, I mean, he's got his own goals and his own things. And like, for me, anywhere I can go to help basically make a project become more successful for the opportunity to have the brand be more successful is what we're all about. Right. Like, so teamwork. Oh, 100. Dude, it is a massive team. And yes, 100%. And it's being on the same page all the time because it's easy for people to get cocky and right. they can go out and run and do it by themselves. But like for me, I, well, as you can see, I got, I got a support team around me everywhere we go doing all these different things and like him the same way, right? When he has an idea or a vision on something that like he will pitch to us, do we go out of our way to do whatever we can to be as supportive as we can to make sure that his ideas become, you know, a real deal so that, you know, obviously for the opportunity for success, for success as a business, it, it's there. What does that actually, um, how does that translate? Like, let's just say you're talking to little Johnny or to me and I'm a beginner, Aaron, and you want to allow me or help me to achieve my goals. What kind of advice do you give? Like, because you're obviously a good support mechanism for Casey, but he's also feeding you ideas. But what if it's somebody fresh like me? I think it really just depends on, you know, what you want to do. And obviously anything that you do, you have to be passionate about. You know, we laugh all the time. Like we get heated or you know, we get excited and it's like, be, because we truly just care so much about what we're doing and we want to make it badass and, and successful and good. And so, you know, I'd say first and foremost, you have to have uh, that passion about it. Yeah. And I think a lot of the racers do, especially the youngsters, man, you know, they just, they want the support and they want to do it. So just when I talk to people about this stuff, it really means a lot to me because I see the support system and the camaraderie, like we talked about at the beginning of the show. And I understand now that what it is, is it's really all the teamwork and all of everybody uh, working together to reach one goal. Oh, 100%. It, it literally with Aaron and all our, even all my other, you know, sponsors and partners and, you know, all the relationships we have, a lot of it comes down to like, to me, a lot of my partners are my friends, right? Be, beyond the, the racing and the business out of it truly having an understanding of who every person is and what their, you know, what their goals and what their visions are. Right. Just so that way, whether it's on a personal side or on a business side, we can all be on the same page, right? Cause we all have the same goal. It's first, it's a job for all of us. It's an opportunity for all of us, to, for all of us to succeed. And for me, like, like I said, I'm an open book, man. Aaron knows I got Ryan from KMC. We dude, I got a lot of people around me that communicate and talk you know, with my program or now without my program that we just have created all these relationships outside 
uh, of racing that literally tie into other opportunities. Yeah, it's super cool to see that, man. Um, all right, let's get back to some of the more simple questions, Aaron. So um, riding in the passenger seat with Casey <laughs> is what we're talking about today because it's his show. What is some of the funnest stuff that you get to do in the trophy Jeep with Casey? Is it jumping? Is it going through massive whoops? Is it high speed stuff? Is it corners? Like, what are you going to pick as your favorite? All of the above, everything. What's funny is. Oh, he's picking option D. uh, (laughs) uh, When we go and pre run, right, we will make our nose sound Baja, whatnot. And like jumps, obviously, it's fun going as fast and and letting that thing fly. But Casey always has that little bit of reservation. Like, I'll mark, hey, this is good to jump. And. Unless he sees a photographer there, then he'll, he'll up. <laughs> really. I'm, 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 I, I don't need to risk it, man. I'm okay. I'm we're okay on time. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna let the throttle up a little bit. And Aaron, he already said earlier, he ain't trying to work on these things afterwards. <laughs> oh hell, we don't. Cha- we yeah, don't like changing that. tires. We don't like changing anything, dude. Please don't break the car. <laughs> so I can see how this relationship <laughs> is helpful. <laughs> Uh, it does sound pretty fun, man. Uh, but it, it is, honestly, like when I see that trophy G blasting some of those big berms with some whoops in it, that looks pretty sick, dude. No, that, that truck's amazing. Like I said, how he's, how well he's got that thing working, and the thing is so much fun to ride in. Are you stoked it's to ride in after day. he chopped the front end off of it and fixing it? Oh, oh I'm even more excited. We won't be sh- hopefully shoveling anymore and yeah. eating dirt. It's going to be better. It's only, it, it literally should take it to a whole new level. It's so cool to see, though, that you guys understand, just like we talked about before, you know what it feels like in the seat of your pants and what it's supposed to feel like to be a good vehicle. Like, that, to me, is one of the most, uh, like, that's an accomplishment in itself, dude. Uh, we've been, it's been six years of fine, too. We don't ever go out with the same vehicle. We always go out with a little bit better setup. Dude, it's wild. Uh, well, prior to, you know, we always were just in the 4400 class within the last couple of years. Casey's wanted to push and step up and we race uh, the mint in the class one. We race the King of Hammers in class one and, and this last weekend as well. And it's different now, whereas before, before we used to chat and, you know, we can have some fun and chit chat in the car. And now it just seems like it's all business. All right. So we got two, is, is too fast. we got two questions. Um, I'm going to ask them both. Uh, O-Ring asked if uh, Casey has ever ran you over. And then also <laughs> <laughs> Alex Truch, I can't uh, see what his, his name is here. Uh, he said he got the chance to ride with uh, Casey at Daytona Bike Week in the passenger seat. Oh, hell yeah. What was that in? Uh, my uh, UTV or the Drift Cheap when we were doing that at the demos. Oh, so he got to sit with yeah, you. Yeah, we give we give opportunity to some fans. Dude, that's wild, man. Uh, all right, so did, has Casey ever ran you over? <laughs> I haven't gotten ran over yet. But, so. I didn't actually run over Orin. All I did was I just, his shoe got sucked off. I, <laughs> I hit the I hit his shoe, not his foot. <laughs> Made a big deal over that. Oh, uh, is Orin give you shit about that all the uh, time? Well, yeah, because it just happened to be where, like, Matt from Monster was out there filming. So, like, of course, it got caught on camera. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So, do you always watch your toes around this guy? <laughs> watch everything. It was funny. Well, I, I thought I was coming on for the roast. I thought we were all going yeah, to I told you. We got to be... Talk I, crap and- I told him beforehand, I was like, dude, I thought you were putting us all together. I was like, dude, this thing was going to, because, you know, we are all friends, yeah. right? Oren and Sean and the, the time, like, dude, like, Aaron's been to Brazil, all the cars. So, like, we've had a lot of time together. <laughs> and Oren just commented and he goes, dude, it counts. You ran me over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. I yeah. And flew I, off on that one. So, we, I was nervous. I was waiting no, for that's the, the reason. That's the reason I wanted to put everybody in their uh, little corner, man. Smart, like, smart. I, it was good on my behalf. I, was ner- I literally texted him a couple days ago going like is this literally a freaking roast because i'm like dude i don't even know who picked the crowd but i'm like it's all the worst guy dude it's your it's your <laughs> it's your boy kyle uh, kyle yeah. was i go who could you suggest and he just throws him out there i'm like uh, perfect let's yeah. run with yeah. <laughs> but um you no know, i knew that if it got like if everybody got together on the instagram that i probably wouldn't talk i could leave and you guys could just have the show without me so i was like uh, i better separate everybody <laughs> uh, we do have a great time everybody everywhere we go we have a good time uh yeah i said uh it was a stunt rider chick and she got to meet you meet everyone and you guys were awesome yeah that's cool man dude what an opportunity for her yeah we did so our you know for us like it's all about you know anytime we can give somebody else an experience like that's one thing even aaron's really good at it's like we'll literally take people out of the crowd and i got some jumps we'll give them dude i know how to like get up on two wheels and show people that fun stuff yeah. yeah dude and that experience well dude you did for me 
Yeah, like same, back in the day. Same, same, I, I don't know same. if you heard at the beginning of the show, Aaron, but Casey's actually the dude that got me into off road. He like let me uh, take out his uh, tr uh, pro light at one time for about five minutes, and I was hooked ever since then. So give him the credit for getting me all uh, <laughs> all Long into this stuff. That's, I'd say he kind of got me into the racing too. I was a stunt double way back. Uh, <laughs> I got to drive his pro light at a Monster Jam. Oh really? Yeah. You had to see. You had to stunt double it. How'd your back feel after that? Ah, it was all right. He did good, dude. He did, actually, you know, the funny one, because he's listening right now, Oren. I, I had Oren drive one time, and he, fr dude, he drove off the track and hit a tractor. No. I swear to God. So he, it doesn't matter if you ran over his toe. He crashed your truck. 100%. I totally forgot about it. He literally drove into a tractor. The guy was, like, watching it. It was, like, 50 feet off the track. He just drove straight into it. Not even, <laughs> no mud, no nothing. Oren, if you want to come back <laughs> on, you're more than welcome to come back on and defend uh, yourself. No. <laughs> yeah, we did all of us, like. Those experiences, like, and I forget about yeah. those times. Like, we literally would go out and we'd put on a show, like, an amazing race. Like, dude, we had some great drivers like Ryan Beat come out. Yeah. And, like, all these guys come out and put on a great show. Like, just sharing that, you know, the community with 50,000 people inside yeah. of a &M Stadium. That's exactly where I wanted to go with this conversation. Like, Aaron, so you got to spend a bunch of time with Casey. You guys have had tons of fun together. But do you have any memories of, like, what a fun place was that you guys have gone to because of an experience that you guys had? Shit, man, everywhere. Like I said, uh, <laughs> Wait, hold to, on. Uh, O-Ring said the tractor was parked on course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this guy. Oh, man. Uh, all right, sorry, Aaron. So what was the experience? You should have done the show around the King of Hammers because all three of us were there with Casey uh, in the laser nut compound and the stories. <laughs> that was wild, dude. Okay, well, now we have a bunch of Starlinks all set up, so let's plan on doing something like that. I think we could make that happen. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so what's it when, like, a really cool experience that maybe some of us don't know about that you guys have experienced together? I mean, maybe just, uh, I don't know, even if it's not in the racetrack, it's seeing a I site or one. something. I got one. And you know who else it involves? Brett from Polaris. <laughs> oh, really? Dude, we got the opportunity. Uh, we've raced a lot, by the way. Aaron, we've gotten... But we got to go to Brazil. Actually, Sean was there as well. Uh, but and Brett, uh, we got to go to. We flew into Brazil, and before the rally started, we had three. I think it was three days in. Um, I forget what the, it was. Some beach city, but it was Pipa. Pipa. It was one of the most for me. Uh, like obviously having Aaron there uh, and having Brett from Polaris there, uh, and Kyle was there and Sean. Like we got to go out and experience Brazil. We don't normally get to do this because there's so much like stuff going on before the rally. The time, yeah. Yeah, this we got like two days in Brazil, uh, dude. It was the most amazing food, the amazing scenery, everything about the event was like I don't I don't know if I could ever top the the excitement level that we all had for just being in a foreign country and having fun, dude. And so honestly, that's one of the things that I was thinking about on Saturday. I told myself, I go, I work so fucking much, just like all of us do. I go, if I can take two hours in some of those trips and just go experience something, I'm going to start doing that. Like, that's exactly what you guys got to do. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. How did you feel about going all through Brazil and stuff, Aaron? That sounds badass. Brazil was insane. I'd Show me a tattoo. A got a tattoo in Brazil? Got a tattoo in Brazil. Yeah. Dude. Dude. Got, How videos. is it? And, and Let's see if I can figure this out. Right there. That's Flip your phone a little bit. Other way. There you go. So that's a sunset shot that we were actually having some drinks by the water. That That is actually a photo that he took of us having uh, drinks on the water. And took that same photo and went and got a tattoo of it? In Pipa. No <laughs> way. That Dude, that's epic. That that's so no, cool, was... man. Did anybody else get a tattoo? I don't, I don't know. Dude, that's pretty cool, man. Holy smokes. That that's that's dedication. Oh, uh, he's a dude. Experiences, man. He's got all he's dude, that's his whole thing. I actually took uh I got a, I got him a custom painted helmet uh for our last race and I got all his uh I got some of his important I missed I missed one, but I got some very important I took some of his uh important tattoos to his uh family and had them all painted onto his helmet. No way, really? Dude, that's a badass friend right there. Yeah, it, it, it's dope. I'm pretty I'm, I was pretty excited about that one. Dude, uh, we got to see that. Hey, would you mind posting a picture on your social media of that helmet and maybe tagging all of us in it cuz I'd love to see that and show the audience. That's awesome. It's dope. Oh yeah. That's insane. One do, of the coolest helmets I have. Do you still have it? Oh, no, I just got it. He just, it was for 
Vegas, Reno. Oh, okay. I literally just did it. So, okay. Do you, have you already posted that's, a picture of yeah, it then? It's online. He'll he'll tag you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, dude. So, or send direct message it to us, dude. That's so cool, man. Um, all right, we got to start winding down the show here, Aaron. You got anything else you want to talk about, uh, or maybe the some of the next stuff or stuff that you have going on with Casey? I'm trying to think, of what is next? Rubicon. Trail Hero. Trail. Oh, Rubicon. Yeah. Trail Hero. Lots of events, Good huh? Stuff it never up. ends. Dude, that's so cool, man. Well, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come hang out, dude. Well, it was good talking with you, Aaron. I really appreciate uh, everything that you're doing for us in the Dirt Life Show and obviously for uh, Casey, man. It sounds like you have a good time doing it and work hard. Yeah, Casey's a good dude. I always appreciate him dragging me on all these crazy adventures. <laughs> all right, and uh, have a good night, guys. Uh, okay, so that was the person who was in there. Dude, we really appreciate Aaron. You do have a good night, too, man. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you in a bit. Thanks, guys. Later. Um, all right, so we're going to wind this thing down, man. I know you got to get home with your family and stuff like that. So the main thing that I wanted to get across today was to understand, like, uh, the work ethic and stuff like that that you have. It's really impressive because uh, you're an energetic guy, but you also are able to, like I said, compartmentalize and focus on the thing that you need to do. But one of the things that I appreciate the most about what you do in general is I knew you for a long time ago, and you started with just hard work. Yeah. You got opportunities because you brought those opportunities to yourself. You've grown into a, an entrepreneur. You've grown into a really good friend with all the people that you are surrounded by. And you really like to give back. There's a bunch of key components that drive the success that you currently have. And I think that you should look back on all this stuff and be really proud of yourself, man. Oh, no, thank you. For me, I did. Like I said, I'm still, you know, we grind every day. For me, obviously, I, I really, truly, I'm passionate about what we do. That You know, like Aaron said, like, this is a passion deal. We absolutely love it. There's obviously other industries you could probably make way more money in. But uh, for me, this, this is all I know. It's all I love. And, like the community of people, as you can see, the friendships that I have, like, and the dude, that's only four people, right? I know. Like we, and dude, like if you met my entire team, you could really like, it's a damn comedy show. And like, but dude, at the same time we bust ass, right? We we win races, we go and do everything we can and travel. But like, dude, the, the, uh, the people you put around you are so important. And that's something that I think my dad distilled into me that you, you will never be successful by yourself. It is always going to take a, take a group of people around you to make something happen. Yeah, and I know we want to talk about racing and stuff tonight, too, but I do want to give a shout-out to your whole family, um, your dad, your everybody that's been around you, and obviously your immediate family now with the kids and the yeah. wife and everything. It's really good to have those support mechanisms as well, and we talk a lot about it on the show is that all of these people around us have good support mechanisms like that, so I'm glad that you have that as well, dude. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to wind this thing down here. Um, we're going to do the rapid-fire Q&A. we got a couple questions for you. Tacos or hot dogs? Tacos. Uh, chicken or asada? Asada. Uh, you could also throw in, like, El Pastor or something there, oh, too. I love El Pastor. we got dude. a bomb Mexican restaurant down the street. Yeah, you do. Oh, tacos, two portillos? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Dude. Uh, dunes or the river? Uh, river. Uh, action shots or still shots? Action shots. Uh, oh, three-wheeler or quad? <laughs> I'd probably, oh, quad right now. The new Dude, is sick. That is a good one. But uh, the three-wheeler that we saw you on the 185 was pretty sick, though, too. Been there. Pizza rolls or jalapeno poppers? Jalapeno poppers. Uh, coffee or tea? Tea. Favorite movie? Oof. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's a good one. We were talking about that one this uh, week. Uh, yeah, dude, that's a good one. Uh, Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Uh, should I add TikTok in there? I don't even, I don't have TikTok. I don't have one either. Uh, oh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, read the future. Oh, big future guy? Yeah, big future guy. Would you always be reading the future or would you just kind of chime in every now and then and kind of look at it? Probably just look, figure where things are at. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Videos or photos? Videos. Oh, this one's a really deep one. Most memorable race. The car. Yeah, that's a pretty it's good gonna one, be, dude. It's, For me, I don't know if anything in life will ever match the car. You know what's funny about that, too, is I'm sure you've heard this story a million times, but um, I had limited interest in Dakar, and then I start seeing it, and I see you go over there in... 2019 and then i see you doing well in 2020 and i was fucking glued i was <laughs> like dude the dude that's getting me into off-road is about to bring this home yeah. to the united states like there's no better feeling for me sitting here as a fan like i was so pumped man oh, so i loved all the support by the way it's it's 
it was by I've won the ball one thousand three different times and right. like this the amount of people around the world that were watching us win the car was pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty wild, it's, I guess, it's right? It's pretty wild. And did you did it do anything when you came back? Like did you have people talking to you about oh, it? hundred percent. It's till this day there's still people that out of nowhere that only know me for, because I won a car. Really? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's go, the I biggest guess thing. It goes to show how small off road is, 100%. right? Uh let's see. Oh, what's your favorite snack? In the car. In the in the trophy. Seat. Uh we're on the uh what the Uncrustables. That's what we do now. Oh uh, Uncrustable. Yeah. Big Uncrustable guy. Yeah. Supercross or Motocross? Supercross. Dude, the motocross has been pretty sick uh, it's though. Pretty sick. I watch all of them. But it I'm my Who's my your neighbor? guy? Well, it depends. Right now, see I got I gotta go for Joe Shimoda right now in the lights because obviously Mitch Payne is my yep. neighbor and he's kicking ass. Uh but you know, obviously, it's pretty cool seeing Eli right now. Dude, he's that sucks and blew it on t- on Saturday. Dude, yeah. Right, hopefully, you can get those points back. And the dude, I, I just keep noticing the speed that those guys are oh, going is freaking gnarly. Yeah, it's gnarly. But uh, the limelight's of Supercross. Come on, you can, there's nothing like racing under lights. Dude, you got that right. Um, oh, what other form of racing would you like to try? Well, like you don't do enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, I mean, I would probably do. I'd love to do some like rally, like what Kim Block does, just right. for the opportunity to try it. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, right? Uh, speedboat or dragster? Uh, speed uh, dr- speedboat barely. I don't. I'm oh. not a big fan of that speed thing, drag racing. Yeah, that's. Orin pretty... has one of those boats. I think he said some earlier. They're super dangerous. Dude, those things look like you'd fly out so yeah. easy. Um, all right, last question of the night, man. Chips and guacamole or French fries and ketchup? Oh, chips and guacamole all day long. All day long. All right. Well, dude, I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out and uh, obviously taking the time away from your family. No so please Sorry thank them, ho- too. Hopefully it didn't take too long. Dude, you did an awesome job, man. And it's it's always good to catch up with you. Um, all right, so the outro. Uh, actually, do you have anybody that you want to thank? or do you no, wanna... uh, Dude, I want to thank everybody, man. I think if anybody out there wants to get into racing or has questions about racing, are the opportunities to, to learn more, like, I'm an open book, especially younger people, man. The, the sport right now is hungry for a youth. And yeah. uh, I feel right now the next couple of years, I, if you don't know it, I, I feel there's a huge opportunity for the younger demographic to start getting into off-road racing. And I think it's just going to take the right opportunities to align to make a superstar. I think the next superstar right now is literally 10 to 14 years old. Yeah, I, right I, around the corner. Yeah, I think it's there, there's a big thing coming with the UTV. Yeah, and I, I do agree with that wholeheartedly. And the good part about it is is that they're going to have a support mechanism because of all the people like yep. you out there willing to help out. So, um, all right. Well, thank you very much, Casey. We really appreciate it. Um, you can always visit the Sponsor Deals page on the thedirtlifeshow.com. Go over there, click on all of it. You can save some money with all of our sponsors. So thank you very much to all the guys at KMC Wheels. We share a mutual sponsor with Casey. Uh, thank you very much to all the guys over at Maxis. Thanks to the guys at Motul. Shock Therapy, JL Audio, Evolution Power Sports, Laundry Racing Products, uh, Vision Canopy, and Cryo Heat. We will see you guys next week. We're going to be with one of uh, Casey's sponsors, uh, Maglock and Fluid Logic. So, oh, right on. Uh, it'll be cool to hang out with those guys. Uh, and then we will see you guys at the Outlaw Series West. So I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Good night. Thanks for listening to the Dirt Life Show. See you next week.